Comfortable with that? Well, I'm gonna be too comfortable. I won't be funny. You want to make you? I can make you less comfortable. What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Got right. any jokes? Okay. You can also sit. You know, not I'll everybody sit. puts their feet I'll up. I'll sit. I can't have the legs dangling though. I look like a child. Um. Right. I'm good. This is fine. Okay. Don't worry about me. All right, let's focus you up. Look to camera for me. You want to take? It? How, how are you? Have you had coffee yet? No, it's first one. Yeah, same. We have more, but. I thought maybe, because um, my energy is a little low. Yeah. I thought I'd maybe take a couple of sips of this before I even focus me. Sure. Don't make fun of the way I drink. I Everything about me is really cool, but the way I drink is a little nerdy. Okay. All right. Gulp, gulp, oh, wow, gulp, you're not gulp. kidding. That's full on sippy cup. Gulp, 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 That's gulp, not real. Gulp, 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 really? Jeez. Can't imagine how you uh, eat out a woman. Add to a clip. Put in a clip. I'll send you a clip of me eating out a woman. Scoop doo. <laughs> Blabbity blue. Scoop dee. Oh yeah. All right. Who's the woman? Judy Gold. <laughs> It's kind of assuming that all Jews like Jews. You know, it's a new thing. She's my go-to. That Jewish guys, they're no longer into Jewish girls because like of our generation and even more so because the parents of like people of my generation and even the younger ones, I mean, I'm 22, but like younger. 22, like, get the hell out of here. Is That sweater's 22. It looks like it's been off to sea a few times. It's got a little salt in it. Was I wearing this? I must have been wearing this in the New York. I got this for some press I was doing in New York when we did our New York episode. That's right. I, what are you, 61? I appreciate I, that. Yes. The sweater says so. I got me again. Uh, All right. Well, off. that's that's uh, Mark Norman. Thanks for coming. I can't tell if you're hosting NPR or operating a tugboat. Listen, Either man, way. We're, we're friends here. You know, I, oh, I, I, yeah. I'll tuck the chain. I, I'll tuck the chain. Thank you. Tuck the chain in. Please, thank you, Dreidel. Oh, that was a different sweater. Oh, well, that I got a lot sweater's, of sweaters. Hang, it's hanging on the back of that chair. That that was the original. This is a blanket. Oh, it looked like that. Well, I mean, not always. Sometimes it's not. I don't want to do a blanket statement. Montage. <laughs> do we have a you? Well, that's you know. So if I open this right now, you'd be mad. What to do? Right, I don't want to. And that's not a blanketed statement. <laughs> Pigs in a blanket. So, um, right. What I'm saying is, though, that like people are becoming less and less religious, more traditional. Mm. The tradition st of saying, but the religious aspect. And a lot of times the family wants the son or daughter to marry Jewish. Jew, I've heard that I my whole they, life. They care anymore. Come on. I don't. I think they care. I'm, I'm sure they do. But I'm saying, if you know those graphs where it goes like, 60s, 70s, 80s, yes. and it goes like this. Yes. And then there's another one that goes like this. Yes. And then they meet. Little Michael J. Fox graph. I don't like to talk about graphs. All right. But, um, you know, I just saw a graph like that where in the in the past like 30 or 50 years, 30 years, last year vinyl finally, ex first time vinyl exceeded sales of CDs. Ah. Because the graph was going like Oh, this. that's right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite actor is Zach Graff. Is he? Hell yeah, he's a Jersey guy. Is he? He's Jersey. Is he from Jersey? Have you seen Garden State? Yeah. That's Jersey, the Garden State. Cut to a clip of Garden State. Can I clear the mucus that's in my nose? Will you promise not to use it on the podcast? Uh, what sound effect would you... You know, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll have diarrhea on you 
while it's happening. So the attention's drawn off. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> You're so weird. I do it sometimes and I forget how much it takes out of me. <laughs> Wipe off your nose. You're so weird. Uh -huh. uh, all right. <laughs> Let me get focused up and then I'm going to ask you so many questions like, where do you think you got funny and like, what uh, made you get into this? Ah, uh, God. Whew. There you go. Hey, it looks like my favorite porn. Oh, you Mia Khalifa? When, when, when a boom shot gets in the way? Oh, no, body. when it's a large uh, black phallus. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got a haircut? You know what my dad always says when someone asks him that? He goes, you got all of them cut. I go, Dad, just tell me. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, you know, since I last saw you. Okay, yeah. it's the shortest I've ever seen it on you. Well. Oh, well, there it goes. So you do, uh, and he doesn't get your jokes. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Oh, good. I don't know if we want to talk about this on air. Oh, uh, well, we, don't have, I mean, we like, could just take some comics. All right, let me check though. Really, am I blurring his name then? Wow, well, I just don't want to. Uh, there's so much drama, you know, with the, <laughs> and the, and the bleep those two names and bleep the name. <laughs> That I just said, uh, and when I said it the other time, and he did it, but use the burp for every time we say. Oh, oh that's good. Yeah, I just don't like talking about you know like I get it. Half the comics are trashing. There's a new special out, and half the comics are like this sucked. That's I'm like, yeah, you know, we're we're still human beings with feelings. I don't even like talking about graphs. <laughs> we'll be right back after words from our sponsor. <laughs> Funny stuff, Mark. You're the man. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped. You've probably seen commercials for Manscaped. It's the stuff where they shave your pubic hair and your chest hair and stuff like that. But I got good news that you might not know about. You could get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TYSO at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code TYSO at manscaped.com. And if you are wondering why is Rick peddling Manscaped, the truth is I have been using it for years. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. All right. Yeah, Mark, we're coming back to the show now. Relax. <laughs> the graph talk on a graph would be through the roof. Oh, yeah. But the go, 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 uh, the go, idea go, go, of go. like uh, talking badly about people and, and talking badly about their craft and their projects and stuff... I share that because it's so hard to make good stuff. It is. Even if you're so talented and, and most, if not all the people, it's just the bigger the idea, the execution, it's just hard to, to make good stuff. So when people are like shitting on, it's like that took so much time and they tried to do it. I know. So I'm not for that. Yeah, I completely agree. And what are you doing? You're not making anything, but you're just sitting around waiting for other people to make shit. And then you trash it. Yeah. So you go make some shit. Who's the what's the special that everybody hates? Wow. Well, we'll we'll burp it. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Also blur the mouth. Yes. Um Well now we're gonna get into this high school no, we're not gonna, cat fight. We're not talking. I was joking. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just said I don't wanna here's an example. Uh, of, well, this is what I want to get into uh, with you. All right, all right, all right. I'm all for it. So um I'm gonna be as brief as I can because I want your take on it and I over communicate. So my connection to you saying that you are on um, his podcast and he doesn't get the, your jokes versus what I did with you. When it happens to me, I get it. I get your joke. I get your joke. Yeah. So, how do I play with your joke? And there's different ways, but the way I generally play with, oftentimes play with somebody's joke is, oh, I get it. I don't need two or three. I, I get the game already from the first joke. Yeah. Now let me take it and change something. I see. Let me just play with your joke. Change it a little. It happened last night. Uh -huh. She was telling me something. I made a joke back. She thought, oh, she's like, oh, we're not on the same page. I'm oh. like, you're not on the same page. Yes. I get the joke. Exactly. I mean, she's great. She's like, everything's great. Everything's great. She's, she's very great. nice. Oh, she's she's lovely. So smart and both the people. Everything's great. Great wonderful, apartment. Wonderful, good wonderful, decorating. Great, I, great mother to her I could use a, a rug in here. I've been telling her. She needs a rug. Where should she go? If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, 
rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! <laughs> um, Do they deliver? Oh, yeah. Oh, baby doll out of Cleveland. Um, yeah, this is our fourth time podcasting, and every time we podcasted, it's been in a different city. That's right. We did Los Angeles first, Cleveland second, New York third, first base, New Jersey now. Yeah. That's wild. I've actually only met you four times. Hey, how do you like that? Nope, five, because I did New York, but that was yours. That's right. But it's like we're uh, we're like a weird hookup. Yeah. We hook up in different cities like, hey, I'm here. Are yeah. you here? Are you in the same city? Yeah. yeah. You up? Yeah. That was a big one in my single days. That's what you texted you up. Did you do you or why are you? I go with a why are you just because I'm, I'm already trying to be quick. So I don't want to be that quick where I can't even finish the three letter word. Right. What do people respond when they are up but not interested? Uh... I'm a, I'm a little tired, or uh, I'm gay now. What do they respond if they were asleep, but had they been up, they would have wanted you to come over when they message you the next day? Just saw this, 8 a.m. Yeah, right. that was a big one. But the best was, I'm down. Really? And then what happens? Do you get When you send a you up text, did you think chances are decent that it was going to happen? Yeah, well, plus there's a little alcohol involved. You got half a boner. You're in a cat house, you know. And uh, it's exciting. It's almost more exciting getting the response and then going over there. Because once I fuck, I'll just disappoint them. It's almost like buying cocaine. You ever done cocaine? No. Uh, I have some. I bought some. Oh, all right. No. I, that counts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, you go there to get it. We're like, oh, we're going to get it. It's going to be crazy. And uh, then you do it and you hate each other and you talk for nine hours and you never go to sleep and then you want to kill yourself. But the going to get it and the baggie and the payment, that's fun. So that's how you feel about like the you up. Do you get nervous or is it all excited? Like when she says yes and you're going over there, are you worried? Because you're so confident that you're going to disappoint her. Yes. Is that something you've already accepted or is that something I hope I don't disappoint her and you're nervous going up? Well, it's like eating a piece of cake. You're like the cake. I already get it. No, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, the cake is like horrible. After you eat it, you go, what, what the hell was I thinking? I'm eating cake. I got brown shit all over my lips. And then it's the same with the, with the eating ass. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel good after eating ass? Ah, uh, no. I actually got a virus from eating ass uh, in the 90s. You are eating 90s. ass in the 90s? Not in the 90s. Yeah, how old are you? I'm 71. Today? No, I'm 39. Yeah, so so in in the uh, in the 90s, you were f 15 at the oldest, right? I guess. No. You were born in 83? Yep. So 17. 16 and 17. Yeah. I saw, I saw Columbine go down when I was in high school, and I saw 9-11 my freshman year of college. That was my junior year of high school. That was my first orgasm. Really? Yeah, the second tower. Took you were having sex during it or just watching? Just watching. Wow, dude, you are dark. Oh, yeah. I had a pager um, then, and it was one of the good pagers. Not just, You don't just get phone number, you also get news headlines. Oh, wow. So I was, I was in first period English, and... Uh. We'll see if that picks up. Yeah, we'll put a burp in for it. <laughs> we were in first period English, and I got the news updates that that, that uh, plane went into the tower. And I'm oh, I saw it at school in the second one, and I'm reading it to the class. Whoa! It's the only time I ever read to the class that I wasn't nervous. I was like, <laughs> "Here's my moment." Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow, beeper with news. I mean, you had a phone basically. No phone yet. You couldn't go out. But it got news. Yeah, it's like a podcast. You had a pod. Yeah, they can't contact us. But they could get our news. I like it. Yeah, it was I like the podcast it. of the uh, 2001. Uh, remember the guy with the clear beeper? It was kind of a weird flex, you know, as a beeper when it was clear. You could see all the inner workings, the wiring. Yeah. The, the I mechanics. never thought of it as a flex. I know, I, I know kids used to have that as the telephone, the landline yeah. phone. Yeah, I never got the clear. Did you ever have a clear Game Boy? No, I never had a Game Boy. Game Gear or were you poor? Well, my parents just didn't. They were like, ah, you don't need that. Yeah, you have a real, you have an interesting relationship with your parents. <laughs> no way they're getting you a Game Boy. No chance. Like, right. what are you, Game Boy? Go, go mow the lawn. Yeah. Fuck. The, 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 the lawnmower is the Game Boy. I want to hear more about you reaching out to girls. Oh, well, you know. When did you get nervous? Because well, when, I, when, I, when, I when I was, you know, young. Yeah. And I would message a girl every now and then. 
once she said yes, or if she would message me that she wanted to do something, my first thought, like I got that dopamine, I was excited. Yes, fucking she wants me. Yeah. That's enough. That was it. I don't want to do the other thing yes. most of the time. Because, well, men are so rarely wanted that when a woman wants you, it's like, oh yeah. my God, this is bananas. I wonder if a lot of men could connect to that because I, I, I Well, you're get, pretty confident. I, I don't feel like, oh, women don't want me. I feel like they want me, so I'm good. What do I need? I uh, felt this, people used to bring, I'm sure maybe they still do, but like people would like to shows, I, mean, I guess most people are in relationships now, uh, at least our class, but like the shows and they would bring like their hot chick to the, yeah. to the club and, and like girls would be like, I want to come to a show. And I'm like, you already like me. Uh, Why would I, I got, on, it's like, it's like I got on second base um, and, and then they're like, do you want to bat again and try to get a home run? Oh, like, no, I'm yeah. here. Why would I ruin this? Chances are. That's good. Yeah. But didn't you want to fornicate? I always made me nervous. Sure, but it's a good nervous. So is going up on stage. But you do that? Yeah, but I've, I have more practiced. I don't, I don't like, I, I never was really in. You're not a fuck guy. I wanted to be. Yeah. And I tried it for a little bit. But I, I really had a hard time having sex with girls that I didn't have connection with. And oh. that's not like uh, me being, I've talked about this in my podcast before. It's not such a moral decision. Sure. I just, my, my, I'm too, my penis isn't going to, if I don't like you, my penis is like, we're not, really? I'm not, not going to let you do this, Rick. That's good. That's healthy. I'm the opposite. If I like you, I can't get it up. So you're not able to sleep with your wife? Rarely. No, I'm joking. I, I've, I've yeah. made it work with a lot of therapy and it, they call it Madonna syndrome. Huh. I don't know what. I've I'm heard like, of that. I don't know what that means. I'm like a virgin. But hey. But uh I can't if I really like the girl and think she's fascinating, respect her and and think she's funny and all that, I I have a harder time getting it up cuz huh. I don't want to treat her like some uh, sexual being. So you associate sexuality as disrespect. I don't know about disrespect, but it's uh it is a defiling. There's a It's uh, it's literally create it's the ultimate creative force. But it's eating ass and grabbing tit and uh, calling you a whore and all that naughty stuff. Do you think stuff. your stand-up is defiling? No. You're doing weight. You're doing all that and more on stage. I'm not grabbing a tit. You're talking about grabbing tits. Well, I could talk about it all day long, but I don't know. I just, I feel... I'm not grabbing a tit. <laughs> I, I just, like that's... <laughs> <ugh>. <laughs> well, I mean, I just think it's, uh, if I really like the gal, I'm more nervous. So therefore, I want to perform well and right. impress her and, and pleasure her. But if I don't like the gal, I'm a porn star. Huh. You know, it's like you do you do a late night set or a big TV gig. If you care, you're terrified. You're nervous. If you're doing the, the backwoods bar show with Bubba Johnson, you're like, woo, this sucks. Fuck you. Blow me. I'll shit in your mouth. <laughs> and you're, you're killing. You're freewheeling. Were you usually uh, under the influence when you were hooking up? Yeah, definitely. That helps. Helps grease the wheels a little. Because it makes you less nervous. Yes, exactly. But with the wife, who I love and, I, and I'm attracted to, and we had sex yesterday. Cut to a clip. What was that? I was giving a high five to the mannequin. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we banged yesterday, and it was great and fun and uh, naughty and uh, good time. But I still have that, like, oh, I like her. And that's a bad thing. Well, it's a bad thing dick-wise. BTDW. Yes, good radio station. <laughs> yeah, only the softies. <laughs> <laughs> Soft rock. <laughs> um, I uh... Soft cock. <laughs> it was in your head. Yeah. You didn't say it, then you decided to say it. Am I right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, because we both saw, heard soft cock, and there's like a decision to not say it. And right. I felt you decide. I don't know if you waited or you decided not to and changed your mind. Well, it was the mint after dinner. I felt like soft rock was the dinner, and then I was, eh, there's a little right. more. Fuck it. That's your tagging instinct. Yes. Good comic. You're a great comic. Oh, we'll see. My you new will. stuff's bombing. Is it? Yeah, and it's fun because uh, I'm I'm at the point now. I don't want to queef on my own salad here, but I'm at the point now where I got some people coming out to see me at in these shows at the right. cellar and whatnot, and they're like, "Woo, this guy, we like this guy." And then I'll go. I just put out a special or recorded a special, so this is a lot of new. And they're like, 
oh wow, this this is not great. Right. And it's a it's a fun dynamic. Let's compare, make it. Let's make an analogy to comedy and sex. Okay. In in the with the theme being performance and performance anxiety and expectations of the other. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. How well do you perform? What does the other person expect? How do you feel after the fact? But the problem with sex and comedy, it's a tough uh, comparison because sex, you're always playing the hits. Stand-up is new and unknown. You're like, I don't know if this works yet. Oh, I disagree. Oh, really? Especially with a new audience. Ah, oh, yeah. That's, that's true. But I, you know, I'm married. Right, but new material, new audience. I've done it all. Okay. I've done props. I've done uh, graphs. <laughs> I've done, uh, you, you name it, uh, improv, yeah. sketch. Those are, the, those are the big four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Props, graphs, improvs, and sketch. <laughs> uh, how do you feel with your stuff not working well? You know there's this process and you're not nervous about it? or It, it is else? a process and I'm aware of that because I've been doing it long enough, but it, it still stings. And you can see you see audience like kind of the light goes out in their eye like, oh, we were really like, like, rooting for you and kind of hoping to see a killer show. And then here you are... Uh, you know, bum, bumming us out. Because they think that you're great and now they're seeing you do something that isn't yet great. Yeah, but I used to watch Louie back in the day. You know, he was doing that hour a year thing. Mm -hmm. He would bomb for months and like crowds would kind of be like, this is the guy, this is this guy's so great. And then one, three months in a day, killing. Uh -huh. So I have to always remind myself of that. And bombing is data, he always used to say. Mm -hmm. You're learning. Okay, now I know this doesn't work. It's like Edison. Edison would always go... I didn't fail a thousand times. I learned a thousand ways that it didn't work or whatever. Yeah. So um, got to look at it that way. Yeah. Also, I don't want to get into the whole copyright infringement shit, but Edison didn't invite the light bulb. Come on. We'll talk about it in another episode. Whoa. What are you, a Tesla guy? Is that what you're saying? I listen, I don't know enough, uh, but I do know that I also talk about that. I've never heard that from Louis, but about the seeking data, like so many things, just information. Yes. I think that's really important. Because every joke is like a little invention. You have to create something out of nothing and make it work and try it. And the audience is the only way to find out if it's something or not. Why do you think that audiences are surprised to see new material not being perfected? Because they haven't experienced it or they don't appreciate it or they don't care. I think they go, oh, we like this guy. He's funny. We'll laugh. And now we're not laughing. So what the hell? So they're not thinking about the process. They're just thinking about, I want to go see this movie. Yeah, a little bit. Because I love watching comedians that I like doing new stuff. When when it's not working, it doesn't, to me, it's it's, it's just information. It's like, oh, look, at we're seeing, you know, we're seeing the, 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 the foundation being built. Yes. It's not, I'm not supposed to live in this yet. Ah, but you have a grasp on comedy and you know the ropes. These guys are from uh, Ithaca. Don't you think people that know you and that come out to see you specifically have a grasp on comedy? I hope, I, I mean, hope. It's your fucking catchphrase. I hope you're right, but I still feel like I'm letting him down. Mm, but nope. that's my own shit. Where does that relate to sex? Oh, a lot of letting down. Yeah? I the lady that has a big vibrator collection looks like a fucking Your wife? Radio shack in her in her nightstand, yeah. And I finish in seven seconds and I go I pull out about uh, nine vibrators and I go to town and get her off, and then everybody's copacetic. Do you ever get her off before you get off? I do. Just to Get that over with, uh -huh. you know, and now I can play on the on the jungle gym. Sometimes I say that if I'm podcasting and it's a new person, like someone I've never met and they, you know, we've never met each other. And I'll, like this, you know, there's usually between one and eight minutes of me getting coffees and turning things off yeah. and focusing. And then uh, I'll sit down and be like, all right, let's get this over with. <laughs> and usually it gets, it gets, you know, it, it's understood as a joke, but sometimes it's not. Right. And when it's not, and that's where I want to get back to, like when someone misses your joke. Oh, yeah. I've talked about, we talked about this on our first episode, which people love. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, we really great connected. Comments. A lot of comedy math on it in a great way. And I felt really close to you from that because I didn't really know you before. Yeah. But there's something that we talked about then in more detail. But typically when somebody doesn't get a laugh, oh, that's not funny. On to the next. But I think we're different. But there's something similar to where some of the things that we do, if it doesn't get a laugh, it means something to people because, oh, you're you don't like gay people or what like there's 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 risk involved in the joke where if it works it works and if uh -huh. it doesn't work there is people could be threatened or upset or misunderstand you story of my life and nothing S worse than being misunderstood same and then they jump to these conclusions like oh you're a homophobe you're like whoa whoa i just had a joke that didn't work that happened to be about gay people right. 
But because it didn't work, you're like, oh, that was mean. And I'm like, it's not supposed to be mean. It's just not finished. Yep. But then they go off and they uh, they tweet. That's what we were getting into, where this joke about the gay person or whatever, that's, there's a formula and that variable, could, you could remove gay and say, and that was my grandma. <laughs> like, it's the same thing, but instead of gay people he's fucking, he's ancestral or fucking, you know, an older woman or whatever. It's all the same joke. It's just the shock value where if, I have this metaphor where you have a stick, you break it on your knee, hmm. and if it doesn't break, uh-huh. it hurts. It's worse. But if it breaks, it doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. But you have to go hard enough. Ooh. So you have to go really hard, but if you go really hard and it doesn't break, there's the risk. If you go really hard and it doesn't break, now it hurts so much. Yes. So you have to find a way to go hard enough. Wow, I love that. Love it. And that's the thing that you and I like yeah. to break sticks on our knees or other people's knees. Oh, yeah. Where other people... If it doesn't break, it doesn't matter because it's not about the stick breaking. Right. That's gold. But you should see my knees. They, they're they bruising. I look like uh, Tanya Harding over here. <laughs> yeah. I'm all banged up because a lot of bad breaks so or no pe- breaks. So many people are going to be so mad at you. Just leave Tanya alone. <laughs> I think it's been long enough. <laughs> um, But so we were talking at the beginning about somebody. I care again. Good. Aha. Uh-huh. Good. Three people will get that. You think? I don't know. It's an old reference. Yeah, and a wordplay. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll put up a picture of um, Nancy Kerrigan. Okay. And then we'll put up, when you said Kerrigan, we'll make, we'll, let's have Nancy and then do separate the word Kerrigan into care again. And that then people are going to lose their minds. I had a great, a great one the other day. I'm going to, before we get back into it, I'm going to say, uh, hey, uh, I have Napoleon going to a doctor going, I think I dislocated my shoulder. And the doctor goes, yeah, that bone's apart. Good. Not bad. Can I can I add to it? Yeah. Do me a favor. For the next three to four weeks, just keep your hand right here. Oh, that's a great tag. Can I use that? Absolutely. Woo! We're cooking. Uh, soft cock. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of being misunderstood, I think in our DNA is different than not being funny. Because I think that you know you're funny. Mm, you hope. Do you know you're funny? Well, I think it comes and goes. Yeah. So does love, but doesn't mean you're going to get divorced. Okay. It's just, you know, if somebody, you walk into an open mic at some city and nobody knows who you are and they see, do you want to come in and watch some comedy? You could even give it a try. Yeah. And then, and you'd be like, yeah, I'll do this. I'll do it. I'll, 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 I'll be funnier than anybody. I hope. Oh, I saw Norm Macdonald on Letterman when he got fired from SNL Mm -hmm. and he goes, uh, yeah, it says here Don Olmeyer said you're not funny. And Norm goes, oh, that's not good. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest line because uh, he's like, this is my whole life. Uh, and now you're telling me I'm not. Yeah. But obviously he's like the funniest guy ever. Sure. But, but there's, a, there's, a, I guess the point I'm making, because that's not, then that's not a good enough point is, is um, for me, I, I, I'm other people thinking I'm not funny doesn't change my opinion of me. Like Really? See, I don't have that. That's again, you're confident. You're you're not maybe not confident, but you're secure. Yeah, I am. That's good. I, I would kill for security. I earned it. I really? can talk to you about it. I have a lot of tools. Wow. Um, but the point I'm making is Teach me, Fatty. Uh the the funny, I'm not thinking I'm funny. It's like, okay. That's not what triggers me. But humans need to be understood. But I think that you and I and other people, but you and I have it's it, we're more sensitive to it, yes, because we have been misunderstood. Mm. And you, your we talked about this in the first one, but your comedy has your style has been created by controlling those misunderstandings. Ah, like you could be offensive and shocking, and not only is it not offensive or shocking, it's hilarious. Right. But what if somebody thinks you're you're not? Are you worried more that oh they don't think I'm funny, or are you worried more that oh they think I'm a bad guy? A little of both, and you got to realize our business. Even if we think we're the funniest people ever, if they're not laughing, we're not successful. So you have to meet them halfway where you go, I want to still be my funny, but I still need you to get it. That thing that you said you like of mine, that acceptance and confidence, Security. that cannibalizes that. Wow. I, I would kill for that. Can I? Can you bottle that? No, I'll but, put no, it in my but ass? I'm not able to do your thing. Uh-huh. Your thing of like needing to meet halfway. Like I have such a, I've talked about this on the pod. And I don't want to do too much. I'm already talking too much. But like, There are, I have no idea whether they're laughing or not laughing. I really have no idea how they felt about me. I can't, Uh, I can't meet them halfway. I can only do this thing. I think that's how you make money. But you said you can't be successful without meeting them halfway. That's what I'm saying. You got to meet them. 
Or else, what do they, they right. go? Oh, he thinks he's funny, but we didn't. Right. But we're the paying customer. It's taking me a little bit longer than than our peers. Well, I think maybe a little insecurity is good then, because I need you. You're so secure that you're kicked up. You got your feet up. You're, your head's back. You're you're living <laughs> living a good life. But you're not doing the theater. Right. I'm miserable pulling my hair out with a dildo <laughs> on my ass doing the theater, but I'm also like, ah, oh, they hate me. So maybe we got to meet halfway. But like you were setting up the camera earlier. I hope this isn't on video, but I made a trans shooter joke. And if I did that at a comedy club, they'd shut the lights off, cut the mic and get a big cane and pull me out of there. But you giggled. And so I'm like, I know that's funny. It's just offensive and wrong and uh, dark, but still funny. Okay, two things. One, now that you brought it up, do we need to cut it out? Oh, shit. I was assuming... Because you brought it up, so you said it. You said it twice I didn't now. know we were rolling. Right. I'm saying we don't have to show that part. Well, you can show it if you want, but... Maybe we won't show it at the beginning, but when you said it, we'll swipe to it. Okay, okay. But, but it got a giggle. Look to camera for me. Right. Keep doing it. Cause... How about that trans shooter? <laughs> okay. Uh, can we break down that giggle? I'd love to break down the giggle. Um, the giggle was more so gulp, gulp, uh, gulp, gulp. me recognizing your brand. Uh, that's, that's a Mark thing to say. But that's a form of comedy. Absolutely. Recognizing. I I didn't love it. Oh, really? I wasn't offended. Uh -huh. um, it didn't make me think you weren't funny or a bad guy. It wasn't a great joke. It was just the reference of it was the joke. Because you're not supposed to reference that. But what I'm saying is, you heard me laugh. Yeah. That means it's good. Yeah. I would have said, if we, <laughs> now here we are, I would have said, we don't need that. Ah, uh, okay. That's where I'm saying, when people are laughing, that doesn't give me any, enough data. I don't know what That's you're really huge thinking. data. It's data. But where's the mama? Where's the nurturing? <laughs> where's the, where's the feminine side that is actually saying, we want more of this? It's time to get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com and using code ISO for 20% off plus free shipping. This kit comes with Essential Lawnmower 4.0, a waterproof and cordless body trimmer. So first of all, my my hair is is all over the place. Perfect. Manscaped offers precision engineered tooling to allow you to make your dick look much bigger. Just look how big my dick is. You know, before I used this razor, my dick was only this big. And after using Manscaped, now my dick is this big. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. Oh! Inside the performance package, you'll also find Manscaped's Crop Preserver, which is a ball deodorant, and Crop Reviver, which is a ball toner. Manscaped isn't just about your dick and balls. It's about grooming. If you're wearing sandals, you need to get the Manscaped Shears 2.0 Nail Kit. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com using code TISO. That's manscaped.com code T-Y-S-O for 20% off plus free shipping. Trim your chesticles with the besticles. That's what she said. <laughs> Self-care is very important. Sometimes you want to take care of your ball hair. Sometimes you might want to take care of your butthole hair. Hell, sometimes you might want to take care of your toenails and your toenail hair or your nose hair or your butthole hair. I don't remember if I said butthole. I think I said butthole hair. But like originally I was thinking like by the butthole like under the balls or like the actual butthole. There's so much to consider for your well-being. And one of the biggest important things, that, at least for me, that I have found that helped me both in my self-care and bring up the lower third. Perfect. And also to learn how to better self-care. And that's therapy. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you watched last week's episode with Jordan Jensen, you know Dr. Glassman is a big advocate for therapy and asking yourself questions because as I always say, answers are easy, questions are hard. When I did questions are hard, make sure you answers are easy and then not a cut to but a and maybe even like a blurred effect so that questions are hard. I know a lot of people that have wanted to get into therapy, but the main reason they didn't is because it felt complicated. Where do I go? How do I do this? How do I know if I'm doing the right thing? It is complicated. And one of the best parts about BetterHelp is they help you find somebody. And if you don't like who they match you up with, you could try somebody else and you get to do it from the comfort of your own home. It's entirely online and it is designed to be convenient and flexible. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and be matched with a licensed therapist. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. And also, I, I, 
I don't care. Laughing is big. Uh, we want more of this. Laughing is big. I okay. laughed. You thought I wanted more trans shooter jokes. But you didn't. Wait, what do you got? Wow. <laughs> How about this? You don't see a lot of female shooters. It's like the WNBA. Nobody wants to see a female shooter. I could have delivered that better. but it. uh, Now it's over. The, the <laughs> moment's over. But cut that out, will you? That bombed. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Just put some burps under it, but keep some of it. It kills on stage, but... Uh, well, that's because a male saying it. Ah. Huh? I think if a woman said it, it would do better. Um, I was just doing a uh, male comedy to male basketball players. <laughs> you know what? Just edit this all out. <laughs> oh, we're all over the road here. Um, this is more off the rails than East Palestine. Are you uh, uh, happy Passover, by the way? Oh, we're, hey. We're, we're going to be dating this episode now. Yes. This won't be out for a while. All right. Um, is that Purim? What is that? Purim was, uh, we, no, Passover. Oh, we Passover. talked about Purim on your podcast. Oh, that's right. Hamantasha. You want the story of that? Please. Okay. Didn't Glassman tell this story? The Jewish pastries uh, outside of the homentash, and I don't favor too much. Fucking what the solid. fuck's homentash? Pull it up. Uh oh. What is it? There was a king. Have a Jew off. No, there's a king. Achashverosh. They wanted to hunt for a new uh, a new queen, and this guy Mordechai Morty <laughs> told his niece he had one hot niece, Esther. I want you to enter the competition for best queen. Don't fucking say you're a Jew. She wins queen, and then the king's right hand man. Come on. And the villain of this is uh, Haman. Magneto. Do you remember that? Heyman. But he would wear a hat. He wore this three-cornered hat. And I always thought that Haman, Homan, Tashin, I don't know if that's the case, but he wore a hat that was kind of like a triangle, a pointy hat. He goes, hey, you know the Jews? And Alcazar was like, yeah. He goes, "Can we, we should like kill them, right? And then right then, Esther was like, hey, I'm a fucking Jew. So they went and got Haman. They fucking strung him up. Oh. Three-cornered hat he always wore. I've never seen this picture. Doesn't the hat look like a Homan Tashin? No. This is a tribute. Yeah, we love the Jews. Yeah. Do you uh, you mean that? Are you th th sad? Like, are you, are you a sad guy? Because you said you're depressed in theaters and stuff. I'm not sad. I'm just insecure. Right. I try to be happy. And even I, if I do get sad, which I am human, I had a sad day the other day. And you, I think you try to accept them and then you move on. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like wallowing in their sadness. But you need sadness. You can't have it all rainbows and anal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be. Uh, that'd be a great gay bar. Rainbows <laughs> and anal. But it's got to you got to have both. But people are like, I need to be happy 100 percent of the time or I'm going to kill myself. You're like, well, that's not you got to have the rain and then the sun. You're telling me. I also want to make sure because it wasn't relevant to your point, but I'm insecure often, too. Mm. It was a very specific thing. Not the point. I just want to make that out there. I don't want to sell myself as I'm not insecure. Wow. <laughs> Did that sound stupid when I said that? <laughs> but maybe comedy you're not. I mean, you think you know you're funny. I know that what I'm doing is honest. I know like I'm I'm meaning I'm doing I'm saying the things I want to say. I'm saying the things I think are funny. I'm saying the things that I'm, I'm expressing the way I think. That's the best version of me. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it might have a ceiling. I'm sure it does. I probably hit it a while ago. Right. But like, this is the best version of me. So I have a confidence in knowing that I'm being the best version of me. That's good. Because I my version goes up and down. Right. You know, you're what, 6'3"? Yeah. So it depends on who's asking. Okay. 6'2 Some, and sometimes a half. Sometimes if I'm auditioning for something and I'm supposed to be smaller, I'll say I'm 6'2". Six, six okay. All right. Well... My point is, it's nice to just have that number. Funny, today I'm this funny, next day I'm that funny. It's so frustrating how funny can't be a, an absolute. Yeah, I agree. I, of course. Okay. I don't think that's, I mean, of course. Oh, I didn't know. But sometimes you do a joke in front of, uh, I did six shows last night. You did six shows six last shows. night? Six shows. Well, it's a hell of a city. We can, you can you really. You like doing six shows? I love doing six. I mean, it's a little hectic. Because you feel accomplished or you actually enjoy every set that you're doing? I love every set and I am trying to work out new, so I'm really grinding. Good for you. But uh, the joke would kill on this show, go two blocks away, bomb. And that is so frustrating about comedy, but it's also kind of what's beautiful about it yeah. and yada, yada. But was that you doing this or was that the delivery or is that just... It's that, all variable. It's all variable. But it's about the vibe in the room or if there's a heckler or if I was off or if I was too fast or too slow or delivery. Yeah, there's there's so many factors. Comedy is so flimsy. Mm -hmm. You do uh, you do show one and it works, hypothetically. You do show two and it doesn't. In the moment, do you know why or do you have a hypothesis even? Sometimes I know why and then, then that's comforting. You go, oh, I said that too fast or I hiccuped on the punch or I flubbed a line. Right. 
in the in the joke. So then you're like, okay, that was on me. But then sometimes you're like, I delivered that perfectly. I was cooking with this crowd. I had momentum, and I it still didn't work. So what what's actionable about that? When you do that, what do you think? I think you just got to do as many shows as possible just to get some general idea of like, all right, this this enough hit dots rate, on the graph. To yeah, find, uh, this hit rate is pretty good. Either it's an A or a B or a nine or an eight. But if it's always a two, then get rid of it. So show one, it works. Show two, it doesn't. You're on your way to show three. Are you now thinking about show one or and or two? Or totally. I'm like, man, I, I'm a 50-50 I'm on this joke. And I, now I'm really curious about how three goes. Let's say you do one, two, works great. Two, works great. Three, doesn't work. But now I'm throwing a loop again. But I'm still two to one. Right. So now you're more confident. So going into four, are you thinking, what did I do wrong? Or are you thinking show three was a fluke? If it hits on four, I'll think three was a fluke. But is there anything you're changing on four? No. I think you got to say it a bunch of times and really get all that mama data. Right. Data. Yeah. Wah. Do you go home after six shows and listen to sets, think about sets? Yeah. I listen to them on the way to each other one. You listen to the one you just did? Yeah. Are you listening more for what worked or what didn't? Didn't. Right, because you know it works already because you, you did it. Yeah, and it's so it feels so good when it works. It's like you solved this little puzzle, and you're uh -huh. like, so I like I, I got that down. I, that, I, that is memorized. When do you listen and hear something that didn't work, and what's the difference between thinking, I'm not going to do that this set, or I'm going to try it differently, or I'm going to try it the same? Wait a minute. What did it say that again? You're listening to your set, and these things work. This one didn't, and this one didn't. Yeah. Now, sometimes you like you just try it again the same way for more data, but at what point do you drop it? And also, at what point do you like, oh, I didn't work. I don't know why, but I have an idea of what might work. And you change it. That's mostly the changing. And then it's, sometimes I'll change a joke so many times that I lose all meaning of it. And I just drop it completely. But I think you always keep a joke in the back pocket. If you believe in it, keep it. And then three years later, you're going to be taking a shower, cleaning out your, your taint. And you're going to go, I got it. And uh -huh. then you try it. And sometimes it works. How do you keep it in your back pocket? I mean, it's just there, right? Do you actually think about here's some like blacklisted scripts type of thing? Like I'll put these away and they're written down. Yeah. Put them off to the side in the nightstand of your brain and then, but always have it there. And then sometimes I saw David tell the other night, I'm not going to give away his bit, but he goes, what do you, what do you, you use a vibrator, ma'am? She goes, I like fingers. And he goes, mmm, acoustic. Mm -hmm. Now it's such a brilliant line and hilarious. It killed. But I bet he wrote that 10 years ago and just had it back there chambered. Right. And I think that's that's a, a big part of comedy. Just keep it in the back burner. What do you not like about stand-up? Well, I, I hate the inconsistency. That sucks. I hate the the lack of respect there is for the art form. The phone, the guy in the front row. I, I got a sold-out show in Stress Factory last week. Two guys are on their phone in the front row, and I'm like, I have feelings. You mm -hmm. know, like, it, it's a beautiful thing about stand-up that it's this loosey-goosey and this carefree that a guy can check his phone or heckle or have a chicken wing and a beer. But you wouldn't do that at Hamilton, is my point. They wouldn't see it at Hamilton either. Ah, uh, I think a phone screen lit up would bother Aaron Burr <laughs> or a black... Uh, Rapper? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's his name? Alexander Hamilton, yeah, a black Hamilton. Gulp, 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 gulp. Oh, I got a... Don't you love a table? Got a nice table mm -hmm. right here. You want more? You got more? Yeah, I got a kitchen table. We got. We could pull up the, uh, oh, the ottoman. Oh, I more coffee. <laughs> I did need more coffee. Oh, uh, that's there's, good. There's, there, there, I there, still caught it. It no, took me a second, but I caught it. But I still had to say it. I know. I'm an idiot. It's less about you not getting it. The point, and more about me realizing... How many times I know exactly what you're saying. Yes. And I think I'm playing. That's great comedy. But the other person. But it's very advanced. Thank you. And you're a good actor. So you, you sell the shit out of it. Thank you. Uh, the, the other person, though, has a completely different experience than me. Uh -huh. And this, since I was a kid, let alone uh, still happening. I catch it more now. Not, I mean, when you're doing comedy, sure. Yeah. But like just interpersonally, like you say some stuff sometimes. If I didn't pick up on the fact that you didn't pick up on the fact that right. I was joking, I wouldn't know it. You don't know it. And now it's just lost. I'm a ether. different person to you. Uh, it's completely. It, it's not even the joke is lost. All of those little things add up. And I am now a different person to you. Wow. And I have no idea. That's heavy. It's a big one. for And me. I know exactly what you mean. 
I, 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 that's what I meant about us feeling sensitive to the misunderstanding. Yeah. Could you connect to that with, with jokes? Oh, 100%. Let me uh, get you more coffee while you Oh, me. thank you. I throw all kinds of stuff out in the wind and people don't even catch it. Like, I have a joke where I go, any gay guys here? And then a guy go, woo! And I'll go, thanks for coming out. And no one catches it. And I'm like, that is so obviously a joke. So now what I do is I go, thanks for coming out. And then that gets a laugh. Because they go, oh, he's joking. But I have to make this retarded uh, face for people to get it. Um, that is the, uh, in, for a multicam, when the live studio audience laughs or trains the person that it's a joke. That's yes. That's what that face is. That's what that face is. Yeah, but it's it's a bummer that you have to do that. But again, you also got to give these uh, these civilians a little leeway because they're uh, they're not not tied to comedy brain. Thank you. I love the no milk. I feel like a real man drinking this black cough right out of the gate here. And it's cold brew. What the hell is cold brew? There's actually, there's a nickname for that. It's called the Alexander Hamilton. Ah. <laughs> there we go. We're back. So that thing where you know to go, uh, thanks for coming out. Right? Yes, yes. That is you meeting them halfway. Yes. Great. That has its value because it now, does. now you get to do your thing, but you get to have that be received the way you want. So now we're compromising. My weakness is it, how long it has taken me to recognize that you got to do something like that. And I have figured ah. that out. I figured that out, I mean, relatively recently. Yeah. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it either, but it's half the, it's half the battle. I mean, Seinfeld always goes, yeah, yeah, that's the art form. Right. Getting them to understand it. You have to entertain them. We're entertainers. So we can sit here all day and go, hey, oh, uh, you don't get me. I I'm above it. They're, they, I'm misunderstood. But you got to be misunderstood, figure out what they're thinking, and then make it accessible to them. May I argue that? Please. I agree that you have to. I agree that the, the, the end game is that. You have to get them to get it. Yeah. Or you want to get them to get it. Yeah. But the way you do it, to me, is the craft. There ah. are different ways to do it. Um, there, you could wink, right? You could say, you could say, I'm just joking. What? You could set it up in a way where it's like a buddy of mine the other day said, and then you're saying the mean thing, but it's not you. It's a buddy of yours. Right. There's different ways of of navigating that. Another version of that, which is the stick metaphor, is to just heighten it enough to where it becomes ridiculous without winking. So you're still in the character. Yes. You're still be, delivering your truth. Yes. But then that risk is if it doesn't break, you're just digging yourself deeper and deeper. I know, I know. So the craft is to get them. Big digger. Digger, please. Ca careful. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Uh, I don't know if you realize what you said. Digger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gra grave digger. Oh. Dig. Got you. Oh, come on. I No, I thought you were talking <laughs> about, um, I don't even want to say it. Okay. Well, George Burns has the signifier, which is the the cigar. So he would say a funny thing and then go, mm -hmm. and they would all yeah. go nuts. Or M Mitch Hedberg would go, all right. Rodney and would go, grab oh, his collar. Rodney, collar, yeah. yeah. So but, you got to let them know. But but that is something that they found and that was their brand. They wanted to do it. If you want to do it, you, I know, like going like this. Well, I like it because it, it has to be done to get the laugh. I'm not exactly going, I don't love going. <laughs> but I got to do what I got to do to get the, the crowd popping. Um, if you were uh, 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 just a little bit more famous, um, that would be uh, like a Daily Mail headline. Like Norman admits he doesn't like going. <laughs> does it so he's understood. <laughs> yeah. I am a little worried, though. We might have to change the subject because I just saw a clip that I'm going to send you off air about comics breaking down comedy. And it was pretty cringy. And the guy made fun of it quite a bit and he had some great points the narrator and uh i don't want to be lumped in with those guys okay so we we go pretty deep but these guys were doing a lot more of like pontificating and the the art form and the other people don't get it and what we go through but we're we're, we're keeping it silly yeah well it was I, very pretentious i think there is a uh more than the silly the 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 why i'm okay with this and i understand what you're saying is I don't feel like what we're talking about is judging. Okay. I think we're talking about the way we're wired and how that influences the career we've chosen. Good point. Good. You know? Okay. But it still is very inside, as all of our episodes are. Yeah. And people seem to like them. I know I enjoy them. I know I feel like I've gotten to know you, even though I, I don't know you. No, I think it's very bonding, and uh, gynecology is an inside job. Oh, you're joking? <laughs> 
try it again, but but don't do the face. Let me see if I would know that you were joking. Well, you said we're doing a, we're very inside, and I said uh, gynecology is an inside job. How so? Well, you're in the vulva. Oh yeah, literally. Yes. No, that makes sense. Ah, uh-huh. right. The, the skepticals. What are those called? Speculum. Mm. The little tool. Right. It's important that you make that face because then otherwise we get in the weeds of this bullshit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I want to cut it off. I have a, uh, I talk about, um, gulp, gulp. I'm, I'm a little hesitant of talking about what I talk about on stage. Do you feel that way on podcasts? Cause I don't like going up on stage thinking like, oh, they heard this. Or do you not care? No, I think the, this, the, what is it? 11 people listening. We're fine. Burn me. So, um, <laughs> but there Sanders. is something I talk about where about six years ago, I learned that you could just say, I'm just kidding. Ah, I feel like that's a little bit of a cheat. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It was amazing to find cheats. I, I guess, but the, I don't know. It the, takes the magic out. Yeah, I'm not t- talking about on stage. Oh, I thought you meant on stage. I'm saying on stage, I talk about how in life, I've learned that you could just say to somebody, I'm just kidding. Right. Because my instinct was always either I don't, I think they know I'm kidding. Yeah. Or they don't know I'm kidding. I can't say I'm just kidding. I can't wave. I can't give up. I'll just hit the stick a little harder. Sure, but... Some people abuse that and they go, hey, I fucked your mom. And you go, what? And they go, I'm kidding. But they still fucked your mom. Oh, yeah, but that's just lying. That's just lying. But they use, they abuse the I'm kidding. Gotcha. I haven't gotten to the point of abusing it. I just got to the point with like, I could do this. Yeah. I could just say, if I say, hey, nice tits, you fat fucking bitch. And then you get upset. I could just say, I'm just kidding. And now she's going to be like, let me suck your fucking dick. <laughs> you know, it, like that. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I feel like that. Ellen had a great joke about that. She was like, That's hey. That's the guy from the um, the dancing one? Yes, the the lesbian. And uh, she said, uh, hey, she had a joke in the 80s. She was a great comic in the 80s. But she had this joke where she said, hey, that haircut's hu- really ugly. I'm just kidding. and she Or I'm just joking. She goes, well, you don't know how to joke properly. That I, was her joke. I, I don't remember her stand up other than one thing. I remember thinking she was really funny yeah. way before I did stand up. But she did something that whenever anybody does this device now, I always think of her. I can't imagine she invented it. But saying a joke and then throwing it away when it's not a throwaway. Hey, mm. uh, oh, nice. You got an improv shirt. Uh, I guess you don't like to do anything but comedy. But um, <laughs> like the butt um, or like the, you know, like the moving, like yeah, moving we're close. On. Yeah, we're ending. I'm not going to give you a chance yes. to rebuttal. I zing you. I get out. Yeah. Oh, cool. You got your your uh, your legs up. I didn't realize you were such a little bitch. But no, but the thing is, um, <laughs> and she did that all the time. So I Is that her? her? I don't know if she invented that. I can't uh, imagine. That's fun. But um, what were you just talking about? Oh, yeah. So I threw it off. Boy, she was great. She was like in the clubs and everything. Mm-hmm. And then she had a new special come out that I didn't love. But you got to be working. That's why all these people say, we got to get uh, Eddie Murphy back. Don't get him back. Because unless he goes in the clubs and eats shit for two years. Well, wouldn't he? Huh? Isn't he doing that now? I don't think so. Remember, there was a thing that he was did with Seinfeld and he was talking about he's going back to clubs now. I haven't heard a peep. If he was back in clubs, there'd be some some buzz. Gotcha. And you're going to have to fail, and Eddie Murphy's going to have to be vulnerable and look like a weak act for a while and then right. get great. We all know he's brilliant and great and talented, but I worry that it's going to ruin his legacy unless he really brings it, does the work. Do you feel that Jordan going to the Wizards ruined his legacy? Uh, uh, I don't think it ruined it, but I think it hurt it a little. Really? Like, oh, he's human. They wouldn't have known that. Well, the basketball court, he's a god. He's a yeah. hes a uh, superstar. Sorry. He's phenomenal. Yeah. It's okay. I am phenomenal! I'm good. Oh. Knock, knock, who's there? I, I what's li- up? I like, I like what you're about to get into. A knock, knock, that's great. So I think I got a lot of good stuff. I don't know if you have any thoughts. Uh, you know, I think bar-wise, you right up there with some of the legends. You know what I mean? So if, if you want to talk more about basketball... I could say you could you could yep. afford to talk more about basketball. Start it, got it, start it. Okay. <laughs> you okay? I am phenomenal. I got big balls. I got a cool guy haircut. I got. I don't know. I feel like we got enough. I am phenomenal. Yeah, I think we got it, right? I think we got it. I mean, there's some gems in there, and I could make it work for sure. Good. That's a cut. What do you think he's better than LeBron? I, I saw, don't know much. I saw uh, an interview with Kobe where he's talking about how like how simple that question is. Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. And he goes, Jordan learned from, you know, Magic and whomever. Kobe learned from Jordan. LeBron learned from Kobe and also other people. But that was his example. And it's like it was a 
there would be no me without him. There would be no him. Ah. Without me. It's like, it's an evolution. Like it was That's a good. different time. Like if you watch prior now um, and you had never seen him before, uh, you might not appreciate the same way because other people are now speaking about themselves and their flaws and their darkness and not everything is a joke and being th that thing that he kind of pioneered that right. people piggybacked off of. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's an evolution. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. So that would mean that he is probably the good, the greatest. Uh, I mean, Oscar Robertson has almost twice the amount of rings. Oh, who? Oscar Robertson. Exactly. I've never even heard of him. Right. Well, that's really Oscar Robertson. Yeah. Doesn't even sound like a basketball player. Well, 11 rings. Wow. I think. Was he a jeweler? Uh, does he even play? He didn't play. No, but oh, he okay. built the rings for the people for, for 12 I years, see. and he got to keep after his first year all of them. Ah, uh, okay. He was he was invented the Nuva. How many rings does Oscar <laughs> Robertson have? Good quick pull on Nuva ring. Mm hmm So he has one. So I don't mean Oscar Robertson. Okay. Oh, Oscar Robertson. Uh, 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 he did, He's got a ring doorbell. He did, he did do a lot, though, for... for uh, um, Athletes and their contracts and being able to um, okay. make money, but not Oscar. Who who uh, who has the most rings? Uh, why Siri? am I thinking Oscar Robertson? Hmm. Um, it was, uh, he was a Celtic. You're thinking of De Beers, um, Zales, huh? Bill Russell. Bill Russell. I just watched the documentary on him. How many rings? Is it eleven? I don't know. He was early on, though. He was before all those guys. Who gassed, I type in, who gas kissed, K-I-S-T, rings. Who gas kissed rings? Google knew what I was asking. Wow. Who has most rings? Bill Russell, 11. Wow, that's wild. This AI shit, are you nervous? I mean, are those two separate questions or two separate things? Because I'm always nervous. Yeah, well. Of course I'm nervous about it. But you're so inventive and innovative and weird with your shit. You got the graphics and the cut-ins. AI's not doing that. Oh, am I worried that AI is going to take over my podcast? Well, maybe just art in general. Yeah, I think that's a very small subset of what would scare me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not thinking so much about the art. Uh, I think that, I think that as AI becomes more advanced and more accurate, um, you know how people come and see you and they're like, Mark, Norman makes me laugh. I want to see. And they're like, wait a minute. Things aren't always the best. They're always going to be. Mm. People don't think about things and know where they come from. Yes. So they're going to take all of this information as fact, the way that they already do with stuff when they know people are just, some guy just makes a thing. They're like, oh, that must be the case. Yeah. And it's all going to be coming from algorithms and data that is curated. I mean, even if it's open source to everything, there's things that aren't real, but there's going to be, it's going to be used by companies that are leaning this way or this or wanting this political things or this thing. And it's going to learn within these categories that are going to be very leading and manipulative. People mm. are going to take them as fact. They're going to grow within that. Yes, yes. There's going to be no fact checking because there's going to be no people that do it anyway. And you can make anything a fact. Yes. So I think that it's going to- It's my truth. Train people differently. I have a hypothesis about- what Vine did to comedy. And it's not just mm. Vine, it's Vine started it. Uh -huh. People, when they were in movies, on television, on stage, on Saturday Night Live, on Late Night, maybe they were funny, maybe they weren't, but it was curated. There was a, there was, there was a lot of hoops they had to go through to get there. People picked them for a reason, for right or wrong, they were picked. Yeah. And like, in order to even get the opportunity to be picked, you had to work on their craft, okay. right? You, have, you had to work out and get to a certain point. Vine offered, the technology of it offered a platform with stages to you know, an amount of people that otherwise they never would have been able to perform in front of that oh, many people. Oh, is that right? Well, some one thing goes viral and now hundreds of thousands, if not more people are watching this person that they couldn't have gotten up on stage in front of hundreds uh -huh, of thousands of people sure, before. Sure. Not until they worked their craft. So now those people who have this audience think, understandably so, this is enough. I'm in my comedy, my art, my thing is enough. I'm being validated by people who like me and are, are, already know me. So they're not being challenged. They're just continuing to do black people be like, white people be like comedy. Yeah, yeah. Sure, that is a sub, that is a thing, but it's just these things, right? Long enough, now these audience are being conditioned that this is what comedy is. This is what's ah. funny. This is enough. 
So it's an equal transaction. The artist thinks it's enough. The audience thinks it's enough. And after enough time, people think this is what it is. Right. Audiences aren't being challenged. Audience, I don't think it's direct correlation, but I do believe a lot of this woke culture in it, it, woke culture in comedy and outside is they see that this is what it is. This is enough. This is what uh -huh. we're supposed to be. And they're not being challenged. Nobody is. And th these are, I'm only following who I choose to follow. They all agree with this ah, thing. Very curated. And I think, very curated. I think AI is going to do that to bigger than comedy. It's going to curate what is enough, what oh, is no, good. Oh, no, that's terrifying. It scares me scared, very much. This, I've never even thought of this angle. You scared the shit out of me. Does that make sense, what I'm saying about yeah, the Vine yeah, thing, yeah. too? Like, Sure. I think it's a great point. I think it's a little... Um, it's a little inside. Like, I think you're... It's very... Um, uh, it's, uh, you got to know about the business to understand what you're saying, I think. But take it, take it, not just comedy, take it in anything. When like going to school, if you're going to school and your teachers think what they're teaching you is enough and the way they learned to teach was just doing simple things and people were doing this, we're not learning, we're not seeing, we're not growing, we're not... Uh, I'm, to not be in front of things that you disagree with, yeah. that you don't like, that turn yes, you off. Yes, yes. You're not getting challenged. You're not understanding why you even disagree with it. Oh. Or you're not giving yourself the opportunity to agree with at least parts of it. This is brilliant. You're not learning the nuance of it. You're yes. not learning that that like context matters so much, but intention isn't everything. Yeah. And like there's so it's there's black and white, and then there's all this gray stuff. The, uh, minutia, not minutia, nuance. There's nuance. That's the word. And nuance by definition seems to be like this well let's consider the nuance the nuance is, is the ocean baby right. and everything else is the land everything else so yeah i i think that when when there's an outside force conditioning me me being the audience the public people what's good and what's bad and what's enough it's only bad wow i would say the same with dating i don't know if you've uh, been online lately but at the dating pool is it it's not pretty like, no one's getting together. Men and women hate each other. No one's finding anybody. No one's falling in love. Marriage is way down. Childbirth is way down. All this shit. Men and women are clashing dating-wise. And I think because it's all curated. I can swipe left, swipe right. I can read your bio. I go too short, too fat, too ugly, too gay, too hairy, whatever it is. And then you used to meet the the whore next door or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you go, oh, I met this lady. She's the girl next door. I, I, mean, I fall in love, and we're, we're moving on. Now, if one little thing is not perfect or out of place, you go, ah, I'll find the next one. It's almost like a diner menu. We got a diner menu that's 800 pages long. They right. got omelets to swordfish. Give me three things, <laughs> eggs, pancakes. That's a good pancake. range, by the way. Huh? It's a very good range. Yes, a lot of range. So we, we need a pancake, omelet, bacon, egg, uh, toast. We're good. Right. But we have all these options. So we now we're sitting there going, I don't know what I want. That is this. That is what I'm saying about having the big stage in the audience. There's so much. There's so much. Yeah. When you have the option, when you're out someplace and there's eight girls or guys and you're like, I think this is the prettiest one and or this is the most interesting yeah. one or whatever. This is your pool. But like when you are like, like same with TV, like eh, uh, there's so many options. What is what is the saying that uh, like um uh, maybe that's not exactly right. Like perfection is the enemy of completion or something. Mm, but I like, don't know that one. like uh, you have so many options that, that, that you feel like I could find something better. Yes. And yes. You're, you're seeking better when what you should be seeking is connection. You should be seeking laughs. You should be seeking emotion, whatever yeah. it is you're seeking, but you're seeking this thing that you're writing is uh -huh. the best thing. How many movies are there about, even if you did write a list of what your perfect partner would be, on paper, it works, but it doesn't really. Of course not. There's too much nuance. Yes, yes. But you're not you're not living in the nuance. You're just looking for the, yeah, I don't like her nose. I don't right. like her titties. Right, right. I mean, remember like in the 90s, we'd all watch the Super Bowl. The whole country would watch Seinfeld last show or whatever. That's out. It's so splintered now that you can find your exact podcast, your exact uh, YouTube channel that you like. There's no connection. And it's weird because we're so connected and not connected. At the same time. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're connected on the most superficial, literally top, le like, we have access. Yes, access. But that's not connection. No, it's not connection. You need to bend a little. We're not bending. No one's bending. No one's malleable. No, not malleable, but no one's... Malleable's good. Okay. No one is uh, going, uh, that's a little weird. 
but I'll give it a try. They go, ah, it's not for me. I'm out. So now you're not ingesting this new thing that could have swayed you or whatever. I'll put on a great movie. I just watched 12 Angry Men. Amazing movie. 1957. I put it on. It's black and white. It's a bunch of white guys. It's a little slow. It's a brilliant movie. It's you have incredible. My intention. But I put on the lady goes, I can't watch this. It's boring. And I'm like, but is it boring? Or will you not just will you give it a chance? Right. She's like, I can't give this a chance. She's already tick tocking. It's over. Yeah. So I mean, she's 11. But still, <laughs> it's uh, it's tough because she won't bend at all for this movie. And I'm like, yeah. just try Just try. Give it a chance. No chance. And that's that's with dating, that's with food, that's with entertainment, that's with art. It's all no bend. Speaking of art, I didn't want to interrupt. When he's talking about back in the day when you would watch these things and then it's all splintered, I want to make sure we put up a thing of what we used to watch back then of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Seth Rogen that's coming out. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I'm a big splinter fan. Ah. Do you... We're all splintered. Do you... Uh, um, do you? Oh, I had another thing and I lost it. Keep going. I, I had another thing. Was it in, in based it, off of? It was something about not bending. Malleable. Bend it like Beckham. Just around the river bend. Uh, Did it involve twelve angry men? No, no. All right, that's a horrible name for a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was trying to remember the good one. Rainbows and anal. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Um, I'll think of it. We'll keep going, but I think we're on to something here. Yeah. And that is, that is actually very, Oh, I got it back. Nope. Here's okay. the thing. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Well, it's funny because, uh, we're all about safe spaces and all this, but also we have, you know, it's like, uh, everybody's pudgy and not working out and, and, and queefy now, but then you got these guys doing tough mutter. So we go these huge extremes. I don't extremes. know what Tough Mudder is. Tough Mudder is this thing where you sign up, you take your shirt off, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you run through the mud, and you climb a wall, and you swing on a rope, and you do a, a shimmy under some some ropes there. So if that's the egg, what's the swordfish? What are you saying? People I, like this, but they don't like what? I'm saying we have nothing in the middle. It's just I'm a doughy, piece-of-shit gamer who sits on a chair all day with a headset and plays games. That's not true. And never goes outside, or We're I'm in the, in the middle. UFC. We're in the middle. I think we are. I think but, most people are in the middle. Ah, maybe you're right. But my point is, we can't decide on anything. Everything's got to be exactly how we want it. But yet, everybody's uh, sexually fluid. So I'm just saying, things go both extremes. Yeah. We have these two extremes of like, I don't know what I am. I'm not a man. I'm not a woman. I'm non-binary. I'm I'm queer. I'm gay. I like this. I like that. But then they're like, oh, this guy's no good. He's got a mustache. I hate that. So we're, we're very accepting over here, but we're also very not accepting. So what you're talking about is how people identify, right? Mm. And by definition, they're talking about themselves. They're curating their image, whether they feel this way, they want to sell themselves this way, they want people to receive them this way, they're unsure and they want to try things, whatever yeah. it is, it's internal. Yes. That's their thing versus the external, which is that's the exact point. There is no connection to the external. When when you're going and you're like, I don't like this person's nose. Yeah. You're not meeting the person. So oh. you're creating you're creating a story, right? And we all do that. I mean, it's literally it's human nature, it's projection. But as we project, I think that until people are like self-reflective and try to better understand and are challenged, they don't know they're reflecting. Yes. Pro projecting, excuse me. I've no when I I came to some self-awareness six years ago, and this was one of the things I realized because there's so much disconnection in the communication. I'm uh, there's during there are blanks that are there's information that's missing. Right. Um, I know you Ubered here from New York. I don't know if that was your house or if that was you coming from work. There are things that I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But people don't think about that because it doesn't matter. You fill in the blanks. He was, he was, okay. at, he was at whatever. You just assume it. Right. So now we're talking and you're talking about how long it took you to get here. I'm like, um, and then the podcast is done. And then later on, I'm like, I'm talking, we're talking to whatever. And like, do you know where Mark Norman lives? Now, I would never give your information away. But in this hypothetical, yeah, he lives in the city of blah, 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 blah. I have no idea. You, I have no idea that you live there. I just assumed you did. Okay. What I'm saying is that's, that's relatively harmless. People don't realize when they're filling in these blanks, ah. right? So over time, some of them are less harmless, but still they stack up. That's so they become facts. They become facts, right. And then those facts are irreputable later. Well, you know, you know them to be true, even right. though they're not. Right. So 
Take that into the things that you know to be true about yourself. And for example, I know I want somebody who is this tall or this blah, 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 blah. This is heavy duty. So now I'm projecting the things that you're not, which you very well might be. I mean, you're not tall, I get. I mean, if the person isn't tall, they're not tall. Yeah. But there are things that are nuance. Not only do you think you need them, which you don't need them, you just thought you did. You're assuming this person is or is not this based off of, no, I mean, if she's Jewish, she doesn't suck dick and blah, 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 blah. blah. You know, like you have these things. So there's a difference between how you identify and how you see other people. Yeah. And I don't think people realize how much they're projecting onto what they see. I see. I think you're 100% right. So. And everybody thinks they're right. So not only are they projecting and filling in the blanks, they're 100% accurate in their mind. I say this. I, I, I. this has been on my mind a lot. I've brought this up probably in a lot of podcasts recently. I should look it up at some point because I don't remember the exact quote. Mark Twain. I love Twain. I think I said this in my podcast that was last week uh, with Jordan Jensen, by the way. Fantastic. Good love egg. Just I like that, JJ. The knowing thing, not knowing stuff isn't a problem, but knowing stuff for sure when you don't actually know it. Yeah. Like... Well, that's what assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. If you assume you make an ass out of you and me. Right. That's where that's, that's what you're saying, basically. Well, you. <laughs> the, um, Good show on Netflix. People, it's okay that you don't know something. Yes. But people, people don't want to necessarily, people don't think, I don't want people to think I'm wrong. Mm. They can't believe they're wrong. Yeah, of course. I'm right. I'm right. Of course. This translates directly into the comedy thing. Aha. Uh-huh. This is funny. There's so, especially earlier comedians where they think defensiveness, they mistake defensiveness for a strong point of view. Yeah. Fuck you, this is funny. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, it, maybe. But maybe not. But also maybe not. Yeah. Fuck you. But then where is it like, well, having that confidence and knowing it's funny and keep trying versus recognizing they don't think it's funny and abandon it. That thing that you said is the craft that yeah. you're good at. Yeah. I'm so... I'm so in touch with how much I don't know and how much I'm projecting and how much I can't assume people know things and I don't know things. That's and healthy. My, that the data I'm getting from these people that are saying, we like this, is just not enough for me. I got gotcha. you. So I could only do what I think is funny. Yeah, but the problem is now... Oh, shit, I lost it again. Fuck, this cold brew is making my brain jizz all over my f- head. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Sorry, you keep going. I, I lost it. Oh. Shit in my ass. I think I'm going to take a water break and stop for a second because this coffee is getting me fucking ripped up. It is so strong. I mean, this is heavy duty. This this cold brew is no joke. Yeah, and you're um, you're on your second. I'm I'm, I'm milking, Nur- nursing. Yeah, technically yes. no milking, not with an Aaron Burr, <laughs> not with an eggs, Alexander Hamilton. There you go. Um, ham and eggs. Yeah, man, we really get. I love jokes. I love bits. I love bits. So much. Obviously, you do. It's word magic. But when we, you and I get together, it does It does often feel serious. Yeah. Well, I think joke people are very serious. That's why we have jokes to cool down. Again, back to the, we love the extremes. We love, look at the left and the right. They hate each other. They're, they're always combating. It's all very tribal. But there's things on the left that the right could listen to, and there's things on the right that the left could listen to, but they just go, ah, they're on the right or the left. Fuck them. Uh, while we're on the subject of Jordan, everybody buys shoes. That's why he Oh, yeah. He doesn't R- take right sides. wing buys shoes as well. Yeah. And we have, we have all these dumb That's the little... wings. That's what the wings thing is meant for. Huh? Ah. His wings poster. <laughs> right wing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we also have all these dumb things where we're like, hey, are you... Uh, I got my friend had a bar stool sweater on. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know anything, but he got a free sweater. Sure. And they're like, "What do you wear, bar stool?" He's like, "No, it says Nike." And they go, oh, "Okay." And he had a great point. He was like, "Nike is like slave labor and sweatshops, but that's okay. But the bar stool is no good because they're projecting an identity exactly onto this versus this." But I thought and it was they fascinating. Know it. And they know it. They know Nike is cool and bar stool isn't because they decided. They this. decided, and that's it. And then if you go, well, actually, Nike is full of sweatshops, and they go, ah, and you're like, what do you mean, ah? Mm-hmm. You got to absorb that, but they don't want to be wrong. It goes back to you. What you said, they want to be right. No one ever goes, oh, you got me there. Oh, that's a good point. That's out. That, that was big when I was younger. Never thought of it that way. You know what? You changed my mind. You know, I got to be honest with you. I didn't really think that. But now that you say it, I think you're right. You have a good point. <laughs> but seriously, I, no one says that anymore. No one. I think that's why uh, comedy is so popular. 
And I think that's why podcasts are so popular because everyone is in their little bubble and then they get to go and watch somebody just say their shit mm -hmm. or listen to somebody say their shit. And I think... Can't you listen to somebody say their shit if you just listen to people, though? No, because I think they're in their bubble and they're all saying the same stuff. I think people... We Also, we used to have to communicate all day long. We used to not have phones. We used to go to an office. We used to have community centers and uh, like Cub Scouts and all these little things like uh, organized sports. That still people exists. Are, yeah, We're just but, older. But I think people are less going to an office. They're staring at their phone more. Uh, people are they're yeah. splintered. They find their YouTube channel they love. And so we're all used to go, uh, used to sit around and go, hey, see that Cavs game? Or hey, uh, uh, what's, what's new with you? Uh, hot out. I now. like the what's new with you one that you did. Yeah. I like that was your second version. Well, people used to be like, uh, you know, uh, what's new with you? It's like, like I, Well, I think people avoid people more. Yeah. Because social niceties take a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. And I think people just are pulling back on any discomfort. Yeah. Even if it's minute. Mm -hmm. And I think you need a little of that discomfort, which I think is why people are like, I'm going to live in a log cabin for nine years now. That sounds uncomfortable. It's horrible. But they're like, I need to get back into reality a little bit. Yeah, I've, I've talked about a, a fair amount how I think that pe uncomfortable people have have a have like a, a bad idea of what uncomfortable means. Yes. Like, why are we so you need to turn off by that? Uh, here's here's a here's a fun example. I thought of this the other day. A zoo, a zoo for a, a panda. He's fed three meals a day. They're getting him to have sex. He's safe. He's not getting attacked by other animals. But I think an animal should be in captivity. That's the right thing to do. And it's the same with humans. Wait, you think an animal should be in captivity? No, it should not. Sorry. What Clip did I it. say? Send it out. Oh, shit. I should, an animal should be... Free. Free. Right. That's just the right thing to do. But he might die. He Nike. might get eaten by a lion. I know, but that's the breaks. And I think it's the same with humans. Everything is so modern and we're getting so... So much uh -huh. modernity. Everything is cushioned and ready. Amazon will send you whatever you want. You can order from the grocery store. Everything delivers. You get an Uber to go here. Fuck the subway. Fuck the bus. Everything is getting so uh, curated and pampered that I think we're going nuts a little. I have a, uh, uh, a we're, somewhat... We're in captivity. A somewhat um, biological uh, uh, way of explaining that. The same thing you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, Hubberman, uh, uh, do you know? Oh, yeah, I know this guy. He's great. Um, he's good. He's like, I've been seeing, I guess also because now I follow him on Instagram. Maybe he always was. But I've known about him for a bit. And he has a podcast and there's clips and stuff. So, um, uh, but um, I'm very interested in, I've been dealing with some hormonal stuff and seeing an endocrinologist and a geneticist. Really? And, mm -hmm. um, I love making a hormone. Okay. Ah. Dude, this is a serious thing. Sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. C carry um, on. Uh uh, normally wouldn't have done this, and this is going to be annoying, but I got to ask, because this is what we're talking about. When I said, dude, I'm being serious, you know that I'm just playing, of right? Of course, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I burped. Imagine shutting somebody down like, come on, man. <laughs> um, it's When people do that, like if like if somebody, you guys are at a meal and someone's like, oh, I, I have to take a poop or something. And then people, oh, oh, um, come on. I was like, does that really affect your I, appetite? I hate when people do that. I'm 100% with you on How that. How did that affect you? I know. If I, I shit on the table, I would still be surprised if it affects you. Exactly. Anyway, just take it easy with the hormone stuff. I don't like those jokes. <laughs> um, but like, another, okay, keep going. Uh, so he talks about how um, gulp, 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 gulp. just dopamine, as dopamine goes up, dopamine is often attributed to pleasure, right? Yep, yep. And as it goes uh, uh, up, uh, and he cited somebody that he had in his podcast. Uh, the reason I'm bringing him up is because of this analogy, and I don't remember who it is, so I apologize. But he just had a better way of explaining this thing that I think about. Lay it on me, fatty. I can't he wait. says it like a, it's like a, at a wave pool where like where dopamine spikes are going to be big waves, and if the waves are big enough, as they splash water leaves the wave pool, right? Okay. Which means your baseline dopamine is a little bit less now, right? So oh. you have your highs and then you're and then you want then it goes back to baseline. You have your lows and it goes back to baseline. But the more you influence these highs with whatever activity that might be, you know, uh, uh, sex and drugs or or whatever things that are more immediate pleasures where it doesn't give time to regenerate. These things are really high and often the, the, your 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 baseline because the water is spilling out, which eventually it comes back up, but your baseline is lower, right? That's what the metaphor he was saying. But the I point like is, it. which I'm contributing to what you're saying is, these 
pleasures, and, and, and this isn't directly to dopamine, I do think it's actually a big part of it, but just these conveniences, you're ordering your Amazon packages, you're dating from home, you're watching, you don't have to go to the movie theater, you're doing everything from here, right? Another good one. You're getting these pleasures without putting in the work, and you're uh-huh. training yourself to think that that is life, and yeah. it isn't, it for isn't. multiple reasons. One, already, at a certain point, you're just gonna need sunlight and, and human connection going outside, but just from the baseline thing, after a amount of time, these pleasures are going up, and you're, but now your, your, your baseline is going so low, so low, so low. So you're going to get to a point to where th- at a certain point, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. But you, you don't know. Now you're reliant on that, and you haven't learned the skills on how to date and how to socialize and how to meet people and how to play. So right. I, I love conveniences. One of my my middle name do. is Gregory. But <laughs> at a certain point, you have to, like you said, have the rainy days. Yes, yes. Because otherwise, it's just it's it's just they're going to be baseline. And now people have rainy days and they shut down. They're just like, whoa, I can't handle this because they've never experienced such discomfort. And so they just that's why COVID yep. fucked us up. Mm-hmm. Whether you love COVID, hate COVID, whatever you you believe on Speak COVID. To some of the people who love it. Well, <laughs> I think some people enjoyed staying home. Um, right. I you know I know what you're saying. Small small number, but. I think that's why COVID fucked us up. We're indoors. We're staring at screens. We're not getting sunlight. We're not interacting. I mean, that is a, that's a bad cocktail. Technology also, as it does exponentially, went up during those couple of years, too. Oh, yeah. So not only are we less this, we're more this. Yes. So when we get out, we're conditioned with this thing. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I think being uncomfortable isn't... I when mean, you're used to not being uncomfortable, too. You're addicted to not being uncomfortable. So when you are, it's it not only is it new and jarring, but it's also like a withdrawal for the other thing. I don't have as strong of a take as you as the way it used to be was so much better or I'm different. not saying that. But I'm saying even pre-COVID and all that, things were uncomfortable. Agreed, but I, we, we, we absorbed it. We lived through well, it. Well, we had, I would agree, we had less options, mm-hmm. so we had to. Yeah. There was no, well, I'll just message her on Instagram. Yes. But it, it's still hard it's still sure, being it's, uncomfortable being scared makes it hard to do the thing yeah we're all scared they call it the wall of awful have God, you heard this phrase no. that's like you know when you get an email from some guy and it's like a, a lot of legalese or very important and something like like taxes or something heavy duty where you're like all right i gotta really hunker down and find my w9 and send it in and all that and you start getting nervous about it and you have anxiety and you just keep putting it off because it's a wall of awful. It's like brick by brick of like, am I going to do this right? Do I know how to right. do this? I have to do work. I have to hunker down and actually finish this. And yeah. you start thinking about all these bricks and you just go, ah, I can't get over that wall. What's it called? Progress, procrastination anxiety or something? Probably the same um, thing. Like you're more stressed having to do the thing than you would be actually doing the thing. Exactly. Yeah. There's also something that I'm not going to diagnose you. We talked a little bit about it this in the first one, but there is something that I have a problem with that people that I think you probably would too, which is called executive functioning. Ooh, Do you know about executive functioning? EF, lay it on me. Um, I don't know how to define it. I'm actually curious. I'll look it up, but I know I used to struggle and I still do. Definition with executive functioning. Things that were executive functioning, but I never recognized the pattern. And now I recognize, oh, this is a thing that will always be hard for me. So just knowing that makes it easier for me to do it or give it to somebody to do yes, it. Yes, yes. In cognitive science and neuro... Blah, 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 blah. Couldn't read the word. Um, that's not a good enough definition. How do you define executive functioning? The phrase executive function refers to a set of skills. These skills underline the capacity to plan ahead and meet goals, display self-control, follow a multiple step directions, even when interrupted, and stay focused despite distractions. Oh, among that's tough. I'm sure that's tough for most people. You sound Some like people. Liam Neeson in the beginning. <laughs> a certain set of skills. Yeah, But yeah, no, 100%. Um, so executive functioning is a thing that we're scared of. Mm-hmm. You know, you do it enough, you get used to it. Yeah. Um, Going up on stage with material that you don't know that works, even though you know it's part of the process, you it's scary or of course, uh, but yeah, like this is it's, it's supposed to be. Yeah, you're, you're fine yes. with it because you've done it enough. When we're too scared to try something, we're never going to be okay being uncomfortable. Yeah, so that's where I do think being uncomfortable is like such a beautiful thing. Agreed. Because like, oh, it's. I used to get terrified before going on stage. And Same. I'll sometimes get nervous. Same. Terrified? Terrified. Like more so than you felt your peers? Peers? 
Like, oh yeah, yeah, hundred like, percent, all the way. They were they were happy go lucky. I was trembling. Were you that way on stage, or more so before? I would took it took me a minute, but I would come get comfortable. But I, at the beginning, I was a shaky mess. And before going on, yes, big time. That anticipate that before that thing that we think it's going to be is so much harder than the thing. Yes, so true. But you don't know that if you don't do the thing. Well, that's the fist fight at three o'clock. We're fighting at three o'clock. It's it's. <laughs> 12 and i'm like ah but then once you're in it you're in it uh-huh you know but that 12 1 2 o'clock that was a nightmare um i did used to box and i loved boxing and yeah. i was scared um because i don't want to get hit in the face but something sure. i recognize is um and there would be gloves so it's not like you know the biggest thing but when you get hit like you almost want like just hit me in the face once because once you get hit in the face you're like all right let's fucking yes do it. yes i wasn't getting my ass kicked by really big strong amazing boxers yeah so i'm sure that doesn't translate outside when you're fighting you know yeah, real yeah. people but like yeah that thing of just like oh this is fine dave Chappelle has a story where he bombed at the apollo and he's a dude from blue streak yeah <laughs> he got uh, he got booed and he was always terrified of being booed on stage and he was in the middle of the booze raining upon him and he goes Oh, this isn't so bad. Like, I know what this is now. Right. I was more scared of getting booed than I am being booed. Yeah. And that's a perfect example. But he got to be booed. Yeah. And if not, he'd be so scared of being booed that he would never go and talk to the girl. Totally. That's why throwing that material against the wall sometimes, you're like, all right, I, I pulled it off. That wasn't so bad. I, I bombed, but I got through it. So you got to do it. Yeah. You should do the first thing with, you know, the Huberman or Huberman or Huberman, whatever his name is. Sexy guy, by the way. Something good jaw. Good jaw. Got an athletic package. edge. Yeah. Beefy. Mm -hmm. Must the beard. You could tell without the beard, he probably still has a good jaw. Yeah. The problem with him, though, and all these like guru health queefs, they're all like. GHQs. You got to get all. It's got to get sleep. You got to get sleep. You got to get eight hours. It's a superpower. Sleep is your superpower. Then they're like, I get up at four. I get up at four and I run eight miles. Wait, I, does, does he say? Does does he say he gets up at four? They all, all these guys. These but then guys, he goes to bed at eight. Well, who goes to bed at eight? That's insanity. You're missing all the good shows. You gotta go. You gotta have a drink. You gotta get dinner. I know people that go to bed at nine nine thirty. A lot Woo! of people. Man, nerd alert! Huh? Yeah, you're you're right. missing out on life. The nightlife, baby. Like our our whole job is at night. I need eight hours. I love eight hours, but uh, I go to bed at two a.m. You did something that. Uh, which one is it? Is it bus. sleep or does it get up early? I, it just, sleep. Okay. Sleep. And All if right. you need to get up early to do your stuff, go to bed earlier. Uh -huh. Okay. You had a plane flight once, remember you told me. and like a plane you, flight. Uh, I'm sorry. It was, an, like, it was, it was an, an exciting ordinary flight. flight. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, same joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, uh, and you left at like nine, the plane left at like nine in the morning or something, so you had to get to the airport at seven or something. Yeah. Why? It was hell. Why not have a flight that leaves at one? I had to be there. No, no, you were leaving. This, you were heading out. Yeah, this was when you were in. Uh, you were at Irvine or Bray or something. Yeah, and you were heading out. And oh, I know why. Because you lose three hours on the East Coast, so I wanted to have a little daylight left. Why? Now you're not getting enough sleep. I could sleep on the plane a little. Well, then you know what? I didn't think of it that way, and you're right. But I no, everybody gives me shit. They're like, "Why are you getting up at six in the morning? Are you crazy?" And I'm like, "It will be hell, but I'm getting I'm getting it over with." Right. So that's my whole thing. All right. Well, then that's the main difference between you and me. But I think these Huberman and all these other guys, these uh, Lex Friedmans, Sam Harris, I've said it before, these guys are popular because we're in such a wishy-washy world now that I think we like just autistic, straightforward facts guys. Yeah. We crave it. But also, we could choose to p take some of that, sure. try it, and not. I love taking. Um, um, I don't have strong takes on a lot of those people. Uh, uh but from what I've heard of uh, of Huberman, if that is his real name, because it might be Huberman, um, I uh, it, it seems to be less opinion based and more yes. about like here's here's the science behind That's it, what here's I'm why, and that works for me as opposed to people having their takes of why like women need to be put in their place and it's like oh yeah okay well that's a whole another thing but they treat it as fact they do yeah but you bringing up how these people talking about to be a superhero and have their superpowers something i wanted to actually show you based uh -oh. off of that executive planning what's it called executive functioning no functioning. um when i uh was on uh uh your show i showed you these trading cards yeah um these uh, previous guests of mine that we oh. turn into superheroes uh, and you and Sam were going to be one. Yeah. And I don't have the card made yet. We have a, a way of making them. They'll be, but the time comes out, but I want to show you this artwork, dude. 
oh, and what I can't your cards wait. look like. Oh, I do trading cards. Uh, oh. Scott Hepper, an unbelievable artist. Click here, and I make them a previous guest, and I would love to make you two with your permission and tell me who you... How cool are these? Whoa, it's like Whoa. a caricature. Of, Here, scroll uh, down. There's Eric Griffin, there's Mark Marin, there's Blake Griffin. That one looks awesome. The new ones that, yeah, aren't these amazing? The new ones that just came out, click uh, the Vegas Dads, it's my family. Eric Griffin, we go to Vegas. Like Wario. It's, um, he's uh, Mr. Potato Head. Ah, uh, Cousin Teddy. These are Dragon oh, Ball Z guys. The aren't these awesome? These are so good. I mean, this brings me back to my youth, that kind of art. Love it. Um, I'd love to be included in the uh, card. Sam, would you game. like to be a card? I would be honored. Great. Wanted to. I wanted to um to show you before I before I put them up. But I have. We've had the cards are. They're so cool. Yeah. I'm a big collector and I'm big into that stuff. I have a box of cards at home. Of what kind of sports cards or no comic book? Oh yeah. I had all of them. I was obsessed. Comic book collector, card collector. I had all that shit. Do you collect still? No. But now I got them. You know that you're making a little bit of money. You don't have any interest in getting some of those well, holy I was grails. Eleven. I, I felt like I was connected more to the comics. What does the age of eleven mean to you? I think it's a funny age because you said that's what your girlfriend is. Yeah, or your wife. Well, it's funny than funnier than four. That's too young, and right. then fifteen is like all right. I kind of she's kind of a teenager. Eleven is a nice meaty middle. Right. That's something you've known about. You like to pick eleven. I like to pick eleven. George Carlin always went with nine. He mm. said something about nine. It has like a real punch. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it makes you think of you know German soldiers. Yes. Yes. And it means no, right? Well, depends who's saying it. <laughs> you think I died in the bunker? Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. right? so it's their N word. Nine. Yeah. All right. I said that once on stage. I said something about like talking about the N word and how like I don't want to be so scared about saying it. I do think it's a horrible word and I don't think anybody should ever say no. You should be willing to da 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like I need to say that in case I ever said that on stage and then people saw this podcast like you took that from Mark and it's like shut the fuck up. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should, I do want to clarify. I don't, I'm not trying to say we got to go back to the old days. I'm saying I love modernity. I love conveniences. I think you just have to regulate yourself. Yeah. Meaning like put the phone down every now and then and live in the real world for a couple hours and then, then you can go back. How do you do that? Excuse me. Bless you. I think you uh, you read a book, you see a friend, you do something that kind of you almost have to get over a hump to do. Like like on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Like you go to the gym. You don't. Nobody wants to go to the gym, but you just sack up and go, right. and I, then you feel better after. And that's the dopamine. That's endorphins. That's oh, that is endorphin. Is that a? That's kind of a whale. No, that's a. That's a. You're thinking of. They're technically mammals. Oh, a dorsal fin. Right. Yes, yeah, different thing. But uh, orca. But yeah. So I orca think orca ring. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think you gotta. You gotta push yourself more now. Whereas before the world pushed you, now you got to do it to yourself. Before, I don't know how much longer we're going, but I do want to hear more about you talking about things you don't like about stand-up. You don't like okay. the up and down, but do you have any any more tangible things? I don't like, uh, and this is a guy who's been doing it 15, 16 years, and this is a cunty answer, and I apologize in advance, but I don't love the... Wait, uh, uh -oh. Making sure we're going, we're good. What's hard now is... Since I have a couple of fans or whatever you want to call them, normos, normheads, yeah, normheads, normcore, uh, I have to go at the cellar, and these people don't know who I am, so I have to earn it for like four minutes, and then they get on my side, and then I have to do my jokes, but I have to like win them over, right? And I get annoyed because I'm like, ah, I'm, 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 I can do this. Let me just do it, but. That's just human nature. They're like, oh, we don't know you, so you got to. Oh, prove you're it. saying you don't want to have to do, you don't want to stretch before you play basketball. Yeah, I just want to go out there. Like, let right. me shoot those threes, and they'll probably go in. But I guess with you guys, I have to let you what know that you I know what I'm stretch? doing. What would happen if you went out there and yeah, you just started throwing threes? I bomb horribly because they're like, what, what? Well, this came out of nowhere. Who's this? What? Like, you know, like the fat guy goes on stage. He's like, I'm fat. Let me move the mic stand out of the way. And then we all get it. Oh, you know, he's moving the mic stand because he's so fat that he's obviously doesn't need to move it. So you get that kind of built in. We get you. We know you. Understood. I have to let them know me for four minutes. And it's a 
13 minute set, that's a good chunk of it. Right. So that part gets annoying, but I understand that it is necessary. Um, how, when you learn to do that, because I have to imagine at some point you just, you know you, so you assume they did. So you just do your jokes. Yeah. And then at some point you learned, oh, I got to kind of stretch. Yeah. I got to get them to know me. So when you learned, what, what, what did you do? Like if you were to explain to yourself back before you learned that you had to stretch, how would you teach your younger comedian to stretch? I would say, look, think about how they perceive you. Don't just go up and do what you want to do. You have to think what they're thinking and then kind of meet them halfway again. I'm going to be younger you. How do I know what they're thinking? Well, it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of like, if I go this way, they get weird. If I go that way, they get weird. So figure out that right way. But if it's in the first few minutes, you're trying to get them to see you a certain way. Yeah. How, get, how do you do that? I would pick material that's a little more accessible. I wouldn't go dark immediately. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, be challenging out of the gate. I would do kind of neutral material for a few minutes. So they trust you. Okay, this guy has jokes. He's being funny or whatever. I hope right. they think that. And then, then you can slide into a little, you know, it's like kissing. You kiss and then eventually you're grabbing a boob. Then you're going downtown. But isn't her that degrading? Out. Huh? Isn't that degrading? Well, I mean, consensual sex with a, a lady. You know, you, you don't go, you don't just shove a finger in her ass. The first thing you do, you make out. Then you take a button down and you undo a belt and then mm -hmm. you caress and then you bend her over and then you put the video camera on, you know. So instead of stretching metaphor uh, analogy, you're using getting the female wet or the male yes, hard. Yes, right. yes. Whereas with my wife, I can just throw her uh, up on the counter and just, you know, pull out the, the, the tongs and go to town. Right. So she loves toys. Oh, does she love but, toys? But you're still giving analogies. Tell me what that means. Like, all right, more accessible, not as challenging. I get that. Give an example. Like, here's something that what is is less challenging to them understanding if it's a joke or not or to their point of view. Like, what do you have? You don't have to give me an opener or something you do, but like, what are some things like, I want to accomplish this in the first few minutes. Uh-huh. Well, I uh, without trying. without metaphor or analogy. Okay, I, I think through analogy, so I'm gonna. I, oh, I, thank same, you. That same. was very thoughtful. A lot of people say I'm like the Michael Jordan of basketball. I'm giving you more. Lift your thing. <laughs> lift your lift your heel. Huh? Lift your heel. I'm trying to. All I need is a corner. That's good. Oh, that's right. that's a beautiful. That's a friend. I got a friend in me, which is a good term for getting fucked by your boyfriend. All right. So when you were saying I got a friend in me, yeah. Doesn't matter. I'm getting into minutia. I, I love I'm, minutia. I'm, I'm uh, one of my best friends. That's a black chick I dated. Minutia. I'm watching. I got a friend in me. Before you even said friend, because I know, I know, I got, I know what you're doing. Randy Newman. Um, I'm thinking to myself, you are going to do an in me joke. Yeah. And I was thinking <laughs> also like, I want to say it so we could finish each other's Sentence. in me joke. Uh huh. But then I'm like, am I going to be stepping on it? Well, that's very thoughtful. I didn't know. You're considerate. But then I also, obviously, by me, like, I don't know if this is defensive, but if it's not, it's in the category yeah. of me wanting to say, but like, I want you to know I thought about something. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, it's almost, the same way. It's like giving a tip because yes. the person deserves it, but needing them to see it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a perfect analogy. I'm like the Michael Jordan of basketball. <laughs> well, I had a thing. When someone steps on a joke, though, you know how fucking, ah! <laughs> you know how devastating that is. I was at a, I'm, I bought this house in Brooklyn. It's a fixer upper. It's a whole thing. Mazel tov. So we got this guy and he's, he's uh, the plumber and he's coming in and uh, the, the contractor goes, what's your uh, plumbing company called? So I can put it on the contract. What he goes, it's called Got Pipes. And I go, oh, there's a crackhead in my neighborhood. That's his name. And he, right when I said that's his, he was like, huh? And I was like, oh, I had a crackhead joke chambered and you just did my asshole. Do you ever reset? Like, like I just go louder, but you have to set it up again. No, it's over. It's I, over. I always said sometimes Seinfeld said a, a joke is like in an old movie when the train's going by and there's a motorcycle coming and there's one train car that doesn't have any uh, cargo. So it's just an empty flat space where the other ones are full of cargo things. That was your opportunity to get in. Yeah. And then he goes and then you, oh, you know, that's it. You get that one shot and it's over. I believe that that's the case for for for. For most people. Yeah. But I still like to play, like if, if I'm talking right now, something and you stepped on something, I'd be like, hold on. I wanted to do this joke. Uh -huh. Say what you said again. Uh, I'm just, I'm saying. Oh, uh, they I, got pipes. Yeah. Oh, that's a crackhead in my neighborhood. Yeah, I would do it. 
I would still do it. I would ask for the setup and do it again. <laughs> okay, well, that's also funny, though. That's another kind of a joke. Yeah, I think it's also a little, like, it's 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 using self-awareness as an excuse, but I think it comes from me as a kid wanting to play with people so bad and me not being invited to the thing, so I need to be like, hold on, hold on, I want to play, I want to play. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think, I think it's that. <laughs> I get it. Um, but will you give me, uh, I was going to give you that, that time, but, like, to think of without metaphor or analogy, like, all right, I'm about to go up. I need them to get to know me. I want to shoot some threes, but I got to get hard first. Yes. So, yes. What do we do? I think, as I said, you go neutral. You keep the the, the first jokes not offensive, not challenging. What's, the fir- what's what's an opener that you would do? Uh, and is it a joke, or do you do you open with? Uh, it's all jokes. Let's see what else. All jokes. Yeah. You know, you open up. You go, hey, good to be here in New York. Uh, a lot of beautiful women in New York. Women joke, women joke. Not offensive, but just jokes observing women. Or my wife. I, I open now. I go, I had sex with my wife the other night. Or she calls it microdosing. And now I'm being self-deprecating about mm-hmm. my tiny penis. I, I'm letting them know I have a wife. So I'm giving them information about me. And they're getting to know me a little bit. Whereas I want to just go out there and go, all right, how about this uh, Trump indictment? And, and then... You know, and they're like, whoa, it's a little heavy out right. of the gate, you know, or or is he a Trump guy? Is he not a Trump guy? You know, they're doing all that shit where I think as you start slow, it's like the kissing, which I know is another analogy, but I think it's an apt one. No, I I, I get it. I absolutely understand. I just I'm I like to hear your. Yeah, here's where we're talking process. And I'm interested. I love process. It. I just assume everyone else is not interested. Yeah, well, if if they're still listening at this point, then <laughs> then they're invested. I think good point. Um. I, uh, that idea of not challenging them too much up top makes sense because then they're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt later on when they are challenged, right? Yes. Like, I, I don't like this guy. So then when they're challenged, they're, they have a wall up. Totally true. Um, they can choose to not like you on a dime. And then all of a sudden you're not funny. If they don't like you, you're not funny. The jokes are still the same. That's another thing I hate about stand up. We don't like him. So he's not funny. No, no, I'm funny. Right. You just don't like me. Yeah. You know, they do that with everything. Oh, you made a joke about slavery. That's not funny. No, it was a Nike joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweatshop. So the joke is funny. You just don't like it. Yeah. And or the point of view actually shares here. This is more a joke on how horrible people are. Yes. Yes. But you are hearing the joke of uh, victim shaming. Yeah. And people are such cunts, me included, that you'll go, hey, can you stop talking? And they go, well, can you be funny? And you're like, well, I was killing the whole time, but all of a sudden I'm not funny because I called you out. This is the us fill, people filling the blanks and not knowing they're filling it in. Aha. I know that this Mark Norman guy, based off that first joke, hates black people. Right. So everything else he says is going to have this. I know Mark Norman lives at this part place in Manhattan. Yes. So everything else about people who live in Manhattan must be the case. It's like, right. no, no, he doesn't even live in Manhattan. Yeah. Is he a fan of black people? They're not his favorite. But like, <laughs> he doesn't mind. Is that fair to say? Well, ask me my favorite race. What's your favorite race? NASCAR. Okay. All right. Do it, but make the make a bigger face. <laughs> what was? What's your favorite race? NASCAR. Okay. Wait. I had to hold you, it in. Look like you had a sneeze. All right. Hit me again. What's your favorite race? The five k. Okay. All right. What's your favorite race? Uh, Olympic. Okay. Uh huh. Let's show four. What's your favorite race? Uh, Indy 500. Um, like Indian? No. I had a joke. Uh, I'm sorry. So show six. What's your favorite? What's your favorite race? Uh, what's the other one? It's a seven meter dash. It's a quick one. Oh yeah. I used to do a joke when, I, like, before I even moved here, was uh, seven yard dash. I think. Uh, Five yard dash? Ah, oh, shit. Uh, I'm from Cleveland. I don't know. I mean, if, if five or seven yards is nothing. So okay. Um, uh, uh, forty meter. Maybe you're thinking. Maybe forty meter. What's the one where you do the baton pass? Oh, you could do that on anything. Oh, okay. Four hundred meter. Maybe four hundred meter. One time around the track. Yeah, and then there's the four minute mile. John Bannister. Of handrail fame. The- Yes. That was a joke. I'm on a show called Not Dead Yet. And that was a joke. <laughs> His name's something Bannister. And they're like, ooh, from the handrail fame. Well, the thing about him is nobody could beat Four Minute Mile. And then he did it. And then everybody did it, which is a fun little human nature psychology thing where we need to know it can be done in order to do it. It's like when Chappelle does three hours at the Laugh Factory. The <laughs> next comic has to do three. Dane Cook does three and a half. Um, or Tony Hawk did the 900. And now every comic can. Or comic, Dave every, Chappelle could do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, what was I talking? What was I going to say? Oh, he did 900 hours. I was going to tell you about a joke that I did 12 years ago. Oh, lay it on me. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm from Cleveland and uh, I'm a big fan of the Browns and people always boo because people care about sports teams so much. Yes. And then I go, no, 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 not the team, the people. I love it. And then I would go with uh, also a big fan of the Indians. Um, not so much the people, but ah, the team. That's fun. And then I'm that's a bit 12 years old. That's fun. But also I'm uh, uh, jokes aside. I, I am big into the Cavs. I love the Cavs. Uh, not so much the team, but the body part. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a Cleveland sco- a soccer team called the Crunch. I would do that. I don't remember if I liked the soccer team or the Crunch bar, but, you know, uh-huh. it, it all it all the same thing. Yeah. So I used to do that joke all the time. But the funny part of that joke, the reason that joke is funny is because after the 11th one of those, we are all in on it. We okay. know you're doing a joke and the that fact that you're doing these jokes over and over is the funny part. Also, to your point of of stretching... Being a fan of of the Indians, not the people, but the team, is the same joke as being a fan of the Indians, not the team, but the people. Yes. Right? So being a fan of the team instead of the people is hateful. Being right. a fan, at least he's a fan of the people, not the team. We don't care so much. So it's the same joke, but people receive it a certain way. So the stretch is the first one you have to do. That's the craft. The first one you have to do is, all right, well, at least he likes the people. Yeah. We don't care as much about the team. But once you establish that, then the next time you do it, it's more easily understood that it's not the person. Exactly. That they don't like, which I know how ridiculous this sounds. But, but that's the, the comedy psychology that you are aware of. More than just the comedy psychology is how we're being received. And yes. in my head, I know that I have no prejudice towards these people. Of course, It's of a course. fucking math joke. Of course, it's all math. But I, it's really hard to intuitively recognize that the other person doesn't... Of course I knew what you meant by you it drives coffee, me crazy. not table. It drives me crazy when they don't understand. But I'm like, you just don't have a good sense of humor, which no one ever cops to. No one ever goes, I have a horrible sense of humor. But it's le- a sense of humor is a symptom of it. Okay. It's, it's more about the lack of awareness. Because if they understood what you meant and still didn't think it was funny, you might like, like that's not like their sense of humor. But more times than not, when people are misunderstood, it's not, I know what you meant and I didn't like it, yeah. is, is less common than, oh, I didn't like that because I thought you meant this. Right. No, 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 I meant this. Oh, I didn't realize what you meant. So That's a great point. It's it's less about the lack of the sense of hu- uh, sense of humor and more about either the lack of awareness, which comes from their inability to question things. And yeah. I think that's what I was talking about with Vine is if people aren't challenged, they don't have to question. I don't like this, but other people do. Why don't I? Not that I'm necessarily wrong. Oh, I don't like dark humor. Right. I don't like this because it makes right. me think of my uncle. Whatever. I get it. It's like when people say country music sucks. Yes. And it's like, you don't like country music. You're not it, into it. It doesn't suck. Clearly, there's a place for this. But why is that so hard to grasp? Because it, because go, it Indian sucks. food sucks. Because it sucks. That's why. I know. But I am right. Maybe you don't like it. No, I'm right. There I have a go. strong point of view, and that's what it is. That's it. But that person's an idiot. Doesn't but, mean they have a bad sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> you know? If I, they just started questioning things, yeah. I think they would maybe like it more. I think they're not challenged enough. But is this a sign of the times or is this just how people are? I, I, listen, it's all inspired by Kobe, you know, or Kobe, Jordan before the him. beef? Uh, I see. I was talking about like, is it not, is it LeBron is the best uh, or is it, you know, uh-huh. all the times were different. I just think that maybe it's the times, maybe not. I don't, I don't know the other times well enough. I do know that I ask a lot of questions. Me too. And hashtag people don't. Yeah. Well, SNL is a good example. You know, the, 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 is that Saturday Night Live? That's the one. Uh, and a lot of people go, SNL sucks. I oh. was thinking that too. Yeah. Everyone thinks the golden age was their come Their up. childhood. Yeah. They're like, SNL, Sandler years, you know, when I was about 14, that was when SNL was really cooking. Chris Farley. And you're like, oh, it just happened to be when you're 14 every time. Yeah. Which is funnier than 11 in that case because you get it more. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, between, between being 14 and 21, yeah. Though whatever year you were, if you like SNL at that time, you're yep. always going to think that was the best. Exactly. You're going to think the, ba- the basketball. Fuck that. It's Curry. It's too many threes. Everyone's I so know. fucking soft. That's why I miss the '90s. That's because that's when you were 14 to exactly. 21. Exactly. Yes. Well, the guys do it with the '50s. The '50s. That was the greatest era. And you're like, well, yeah, because you were uh, 14 and and fucking Peggy Sue and you're Malibu. You heard she got married at this point, though, right? <laughs> A lot of people don't realize. I think that was Jim Carrey's first movie or That's one of right. them. At least. That's right. That and uh, either Once Bitten or Earth Girls Are Easy. Now, why Are you can't... a cinephile? 
I love kids. No, yeah, I love uh, movies. I watch I watch a movie a week at least. Yeah, He's, twelve angry men. I was like, I get what you were saying, but I also could empathize with your wife. Where like, like people like Casablanca is like the greatest movie ever, and like I put it on, it's like I can't do this. I but try though. No, no, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm, okay, I'm I'm saying that that's big. I'm I'm like I I can't I I. I I want to watch something else right now. I get it. I totally get it. I feel the same way. But you can't say it sucks. Of course not. They, but that's but I, what other people do. Yeah. And p people also say cauliflower sucks. Well, two things. One, you can prepare it differently. And two, yeah, compared to like, you know, uh, buffalo chicken fingers versus buffalo yeah, cauliflower. Krispy Kreme. But like, it's it's good for you. It's good for you. But also- And like, I enjoy it. But give me the fucking good stuff. Of course. But you, you got to get the good and the bad. You're right. You're right. Get a cauliflower uh, sushi taco or something. Yeah, but if I have to eat it for two or three hours while I'm sitting on the couch, it's wow. like, give me some fucking color. And you're going to gas chamber her out with the farting. The cauliflower, whew, the gas. Is, I love cauliflower. I love it too. And it's in everything now. Oh, yeah. It like really kicked up. Andy Haynes is this great joke about how a cauliflower's agent must be like, all right, I know we, had a, we were <laughs> struggling, but we got you in pizza. And it's a great joke. I had a bit what was... uh. It was about uh, how all the desserts, cookies, found the way to... Oh, cookie the, cake. Well, cookie... Like, like, listen, you have Pop-Tarts. You could have cinnamon. You could have strawberry. Like, at all the categories of desserts are ice cream. They have different flavors of it. You know, there's donuts. Now, they eat, donuts is doing decent. They got the cronut. They got the different yep, versions. Yep, yep. Cakes have the cupcakes. They all try and find, but they're sealing... The cookie has found a way to not only have more flavors than any other treat, but to go out, now we're cookie cakes. Now we're doing all the different cakes. We wouldn't, we're collaborating with the ice creams. I yes, mean, yes, cookies and cream. You got cookie flavored things. Yeah, cookie you dough. Got, you got cookie dough. You got you got cookie dough that doesn't have the eggs. You literally aren't even supposed to make the cookie dough. Yes. Cookies have found a way. Cookie crisp. Cookies the are cereal. the cauliflower of the dessert world. I would throw another wrench in your asshole and go with the milk. We got soy milk, we got oat milk, we got almond milk, we got half and but half. But let me tell you something. The cookie capitalized on that and still said you could dip me in all of them. Ooh, that's true. That's true. What the You're cookie has done that other desserts haven't, and they've done somewhat, like the waffle has done it with the chicken, but that's a novelty at a certain point. Yeah, and that's on the fringes. The cookie has said, not only are we going to perfect ourselves, just like LeBron, we are going to find ways of making other things better. We're branching. Do you like ice cream? I love, I eat too much ice cream. How about you put a little ice cream on a cookie? There is an, a cookie sandwich. Yeah, that's yeah. That's a category. It's not just like a la mode. A brownie a la mode is like a brownie with the ice cream. It's yeah. not its own thing. A cookie sandwich, what's the first word in cookie sandwich? Cookie. You don't even mention the ice cream. You're a cookie monster. I Please, like I get it and it's funny. Just take it easy on me. I'm oh, a sensitive sorry. boy. Okay, well, I will say this though. The brownie dominated the cookie with... Weed. I see a lot more weed brownies than weed cookies. Yeah, may I? Yeah. Because they had to. Hmm? Brownie wasn't enough. I think a brownie's pretty solid. Sure. But if the brownie was doing really well, it's like what you were talking about with the diner. Why do we need to have the eggs and the and the and the catfish and everything in between? If the brownie was really do, do you watch Shark Tank? Yeah, I love Shark Tank. Okay. Let's say you have a, a product, right? We'll call it a business, but you have a, a main hero product that is doing really well, and you're just fucking. Your margins are great. Your your cost customer acquisition is low. You're going viral. You're selling stuff online, and then you're like, I want to get into retail. What are the sharks going to tell you? Boo! You're doing so well. Why 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 get into that headache of things? Yes. Why get into that? Right. If the brownie was doing what the cookie was doing, it wouldn't be like, all right, we need to pivot into weed. Yeah. We need to because by the way, the cookie could do weed and it's done weed. Sure. But. I don't care. They don't need it. Also, the brownie was big into weed back when people were making their own edibles. Yes. Now that edibles are like gummy, it's candy, gummies, it's chocolates. Yeah. The brownie had a time. Okay. The brownie is my space. All right. And well, for that reason, I'm, I'm out. out. Uh -huh. <laughs> That'd be how I would be gay. If I was, I was gonna be gay, I would go on Shark Tank. And go and for that reason, <laughs> I don't like pussy. I'm out. Um. Me needing to call it out again. When you said I'm out, I was, and then you said that I was going to go back to what you were saying at the beginning of this. Uh -huh. When you're like, uh, when the, anyone gay here, uh, thanks for coming out. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. yeah. Good yeah. point. Good callback. Good connection. All right. I think this picked up in the second half. The first half I was lacking. That was on me. I was lagging. Lagging or lacking? Either way, I stunk. Well, and I feel if, like we picked up. If that's up. the case, then I'll take responsibility because at the beginning I was talking a lot more. No, no, no. But you were trying to find something, and I was always. I was uh, not catching. 
Okay. I didn't feel that, but okay. I, I believe your instincts. I was in my head. Insecure, not insecure. Um, again, as much as you don't want to sell that you are not somebody who's living in the past, I want to sell. <laughs> I am not somebody who's not insecure. Um, okay. Uh, I will say uh, I am a bit more, ex- I have, I'm accepting an understanding of my insecurities a bit. Like there is a, a bit less shame in it and yeah. need to hide it. Yeah. Because like, Am I perfect? I think so. <laughs> but I know you don't. So well, I'm okay is. with it. I do some all right, stuff. all right. But you got a great bod, a decent Jew mug, and a great head of hair. So I don't know. You're doing all right. Look I at think the f- that's the meanest compliment I've ever received. What? I'm saying you're tall. You got a, a, a face and a hair. Yeah. But but to, to have the face be that f- that much less than the body and hair. Whoa, whoa, that's where you took it. You said no. I you said, said a Jew mug, a nice Jew mug. To have great, and then you got great pants. You got a shirt uh-huh. and a great smile. It's the shirt is uh, you know. I don't know. I don't find Jew as a pejorative. I don't find Jew to be pejorative either. But every now and then, you are. I've said a nice Jew mug. You you are Jewish. It's a mug. And I said nice. I was making a joke between uh, Jew and you. And uh, edited it all out. This episode, <laughs> this episode will be 28 minutes of gold. Yeah. And we'll make it, we'll make it, you know, uh, an hour 50 of uh, Jew. Okay. Bless you. Um, What do you want to plug? Oh, hey. All right. Uh, well. This is out, by the way, probably in in May. So am I. Uh, in May, I am all, all over the road. I'm going to Australia again. Oh, I saw that. That'll be fun. And then I got a Netflix special coming out in August, so that's a little little premature. What's it called? It's called Soup to Nuts, because I cover everything. I go from soup to nuts, get everything, Jew, black, trans, Why didn't gay. you go egg to swordfish when you had soup to nuts right there? Ah, egg to swordfish came out, was birthed here. Right. So I didn't have it then. I'm saying, why didn't you use soup to nuts here if that's the Because that's been done. I wanted to make my own. I'm a creator. Mm-hmm. We already did Soup to Nuts. Now we're working on the new stuff. There you go. Are you happy with Soup to Nuts? I love Soup to Nuts. But you know what sucks is I've run it by a couple of people. Half to be like, oh, I like that. And then half to be like, what does that mean? Are you talking about the title or the special itself? The title. Gotcha. Oh, I'm happy with the special, yes. Well, nobody knew what Rothaniel meant until they watched it. I don't ah, think you need to know. Good point. But this is a term. That's not a real term. Well, I, th- I think it is. Okay. Ooh. Short-term memory. But... Uh, yeah, soup to nuts. Happy with it. Shot in Chicago. Went great. Where'd you shoot it? At the Vic Theater. I performed at the Vic Theater uh, once. What is it, like 2,000 people? Nah, probably 950. And I didn't play there or I knew it wrong. I, I, I was on it the feels un- like it. undateable tour. Ah. I, I'm not playing theaters, but like there was enough of us where it was. And I remember it was the first time I played a theater and I thought it was really big. Yeah, it feels big. It feels, uh, it's like my dick. It's small, but it feels all right. Right. But, uh... Yeah, it went great and uh, happy with it, but I am worried about the backlash because I really get a little dark. Right. So I'll just not look at the internet for backlash a month. of comments or backlash of what that could do to your life. Due to my life, just say, "Hey, this guy's bad. We got to take." You say him no back. a lot, huh? You say no a lot. A big N word, huh? Yeah. Is there anything where you're watching like, oh, should I take this out? Maybe I'm gonna watch the edit soon and and just feel it out. Who directed it? My buddy James Webb. Shout out to James Webb. Put his Instagram name up here. The Chicago Pro. Is this your second hour special? No, no. This is my third hour, and I've done three half hours. I know the 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 comed- the half hour Netflix one. There's there's three of those that you did? No, I did a half hour on Comedy Central. I did a half hour on Netflix, and I did a half hour on uh CISO. One of those. Gotcha. Nobody saw I know that I know I not all of them, obviously. Um, wow, that's a lot of special. And I man. did an hour special on audio only, on an album. What so, made you want to do that? Well, I was nobody, and I couldn't get a right. special made. And it was before the YouTube yeah. popped off where everybody was doing that. So just made an album. Um, are you comfortable talking money? And if you are, but not on air, I'll bleep it, because I have a couple questions. Uh, I can talk money. W- what was the budget that Netflix gave you? They do the uh, what David Tell calls the white guy gig, white guy deal, which is uh, 200 K, but you own it again in two years. And of the 200K, is that what it costs to produce, including your fee? Not really. It, it costs about that. So they pay you on top of that? No. So that's what I meant. I'm oh, saying. Oh, sorry. So they'll give you 200K to make a special. You and if you can it, make it in 50 it. bucks, you get to keep the rest. Yes. Right. But it's got to be up to Netflix 
right. scope, you know, yeah. 4K, whatever the hell sound, yeah. color correct. Right. Um, but you don't make a lot. So it's really just a commercial for your act. Right. Um, what was the budget going to, do you think? Huh? Did you rent the theater out? I did. So you get money on the theater because you get the payment for right. doing so the So you get shows. the ticket sales. You get the tickets. And did you sell it out? Four times. And you filmed four times? Yeah. What made you want to do that? Because why just, not? Just in case. You never know what you'll Two nights? Get. Two nights, two shows a night. But I fucked up because I booked it on St. Paddy's Day. So Friday was a shit show. It's just a drunk mess. Did you, did you not use much of that? Not much, but I got a couple zings in from right. psychos. So we might pepper those Fun. in. Four shows. What is that? 3,600 tickets. Whatever 950 is. Oh, well, nine, I thought it was 900. Well, we'll call it nine with the camera kills. Yeah, yeah 3,600. 36 to 3,800. Good man. In two days. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking mental. Well, it's very exciting. But now you got to keep it going. Now it's this weird fear of like, I finally got to the mountaintop and now I got to stay up here. So that's a whole other fear. Stay up here means ticket sales, right? Yeah. It's you don't that wanna, objective. You don't want to go, look at look at a guy like beep this, but... <laughs> I mean, the guy was on top of uh, top of Mount Jizz, and now he's uh, mopping the floor. So you you uh, are going to isn't that a kind of a bummer? But it also makes sense. It is what it is. How superficial the success is there because it's not about how funny you are anymore, right? You know, sadly, it's about I want to make sure I sell at least as many, if not more, tickets. Yeah. And the more you sell, the harder it is to maintain that. Yeah. And once your tickets go down, you might be funnier, but that means you're. I loop. know. But I'm, that's why I'm grinding, because I'm like, all right. Because all, you always think, hey, once I get there, I can just kick back and coast. But it's the exact opposite. Right. It's kind of like how you go to an open mic and you go, that's ah, an open mic. It's eight people in a room. I'll try some weird shit. The weird shit will die in there. You have to have killer material to get to yeah. get a response at an open mic. Yeah. You can try weird shit on a hot crowd. Right. It's a big misconception yeah. in comedy. I'll fuck around on the open mic. No, the open mic, you actually have to have hard jokes right. if you want to get a laugh. The people that are there yeah. and in a good mood and want to laugh, that's the easier crowd. I've thought about, uh, you go see concerts and the, you, the musician is telling a little story about how he or she wrote that song. Uh, you know, I came up oh, with this yeah. one. I got uh, with my ex. I'm sorry, I didn't break up with her. She broke up with me. But I don't like people to know that. And then they fucking lose Kills. it. Yeah, because they weren't expecting that. Must be nice. I want to do a special. I have so many special ideas. I haven't done any. Uh, I want to do one where I'm a musician, and uh, uh, it's just between the songs, and it's just yeah. and, and it's just like uh, that's great. It's like working really well, so you keep going. Yeah. You know? And then once it doesn't, and they also have the luxury of when something doesn't work, you go, ah, I don't know, but what do I know? Um, yes. You tune it up a little exactly. bit and then you go into it, you know? That's a great idea. But I would do like 10 minutes of that. You don't do it a full special, but 10 minutes of that would kill. I want to tell you about uh, another time because oh, I that's love a great it. idea. I have so many special ideas that I've thought it's a novelty. It doesn't, you know, I mean, you could do a special, but at a certain point, the, the fun part is that thing. Yeah. But yeah, I was thinking they don't have to be hours, they could be half hours, but they could be 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I think too. A, a funny thing would be a, a eulogy. You got a coffin there. I did this. No way. I did. I used to have a. I used to have a bit where it was. Yeah, and I would bring out and um uh my such and such passed away. Um uh, but they know how much important this is and travel there, and I couldn't miss a show, so I figured I could at least maybe at least speak to them. You know, here and I would do the eulogy. Yeah, almost like you're prepping what you would say for a eulogy, but I did treat it. And then I would start to cry. It was very performative and people like it got too serious. That's gold. Um, did I step on what the bit was or is that a no, similar thing? No, that's pretty pretty much it. It was just an idea I had, but you did it. Um, well, How I mean, funny I did it, 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 you know, not televised anywhere. But do you have it? Um, we got to put that on YouTube. Oh, I mean, I I probably do on my flip cam. I bet you I do. Oh, uh, we got to see that. I also had an idea of one I wanted to do. Um, for a late night thing was uh, I gave a best man speech to my buddy John DeWalt and Allison Buzma. Uh, great speech. Oh, Just yeah. Killed. Oh, I put that up, too. Well, it was so good. And it was also very divisive on what best speech, best man speeches are. Uh -huh. Like it was still heartfelt and real, but I was also doing a lot of the devices and deconstructing. And it was just fun. I was like, this is really good. Like, yeah, this is where my skill set shines. But that's content. So I thought that it might be fun to do for a late night set to, to be brought out with this subtext. I could say, but I'd love for it to be brought out. This next comedian. Um, it was, a, uh, uh, our, our, we had someone booked, not these words, some version of this. We had somebody booked and they had to cancel. So the last minute we were able to ask, you know, this next comedian who was uh, on his way to the airport, his best friend is being married and he decided to come. So I just want some way setting up basically. So when I go out, 
in a tux or something. I knew I just came from the airport. Yeah. Basically something of like, I'm not supposed to be here. My best friend's getting married. He understands that this was a big opportunity, but I also want to make sure I, you know, could still give him the speech he deserves. Just framing yeah, it in the yeah, way yeah. and then just doing a five minute best man speech. Love it. I love, love it. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be great. And you could do a whole series of these eulogy, best man speech, but it's just, you're doing comedy, but they're in these weird uh, environments. Yeah. I uh, love that. An, I, an hour an hour of like 12 specials. Yeah. Five minute specials. That's gold. And you get to mix it up, yeah. you know, because now a lot of people don't want to watch a full hour. They watch, they'll watch The Last of Us. They'll watch the whole season or succession, but they'll still sit there for six hours. But if you said, hey, you got to watch a six hour movie, they'd go, fuck for you. For the same reason why I'm not that interested in Casablanca. Because it's it's just they're just standing there and where's the where's the fun? I know, you know, I know. There's no movement. Yeah, we've been conditioned. Guilty. Yeah, yeah, but and maybe it's not a bad thing. And this is how the world works. We we speed up. All right. Well, uh, I normally take Polaroids, but I don't travel with my camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to look into this camera. Yeah. Smile like it's a Polaroid. One, two, three. And we'll turn that into a Polaroid. Great. Um, <sighs> All right. And we'll, you know, put the website in the description and blah, blah, blah. Great. All right, dude. I love talking to you. Yeah, I think we had some moments in there. <laughs>